What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of E-Force with the Podcast. And today I have a uh, former Secret Service agent, um, military veteran, um, Gary Byrne. So thank you for, for coming to my house. This my, is my pleasure. House. My pleasure. Just for clarification, I was actually in the uniform division of the Secret Service. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you know, which, you know, is, uh, what's the difference? So I was going to say, usually people say, what's the difference? I say about 40 grand a year. No, um, yeah, in, in down or up? Uh, down. <laughs> so, but uh, jokingly, uh, I'll just joking aside. So, um, the difference is that if, you know uh, you're not far from the White House. You've no. been around it a million times, of course. So, when you get up to the the perimeter of the White House, those officers you see, that's the uniform division. Got it. Guys on the roof, they're counter sniper uniform division. Got it. K nine bomb sniffing dogs, uh, uniform division. Uh, they also in the D.C. area, right where we are now. The um, they have a, a crime scene technician unit oh, wow. that they got funding for years ago when I was there. I was there from 91 uh, to uh, 2003, and they got the funding years ago. And um, to basically, because Metropolitan w- was so overwhelmed. Of course, yeah, of course, yeah. And uh, so, and they actually trained them. There's a couple, you know, later on as we go on, and there's, I have a couple stories for you where Metropolitan helped the Uniform Division of the Secret Service and vice versa. Vice versa, yeah. Yeah, so. That's but crazy. yeah, so they, um, the Uniform Division does all the metal detectors uh, around the White House. They do all the internal p- fixed posts. The agents, you know, that everybody knows. In suits. You're right, in suits with the sunglasses, yeah. although we all wear sunglasses yeah. when we have to. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they they run the Secret Service. They're federal investigators, and they're in the, in the White House and everything, but they're, they, you know, wherever the president moves, they move with them. The posts that we hold are fixed. That we, that's why, Got it. you know, the president can leave the Oval Office and it's always secured, no matter what. No matter what, because the uniform division was always there. Um, the same with the posts around the, the the living quarters and the ground floor, and uh, and so that's pretty much what the uniform division does. They have some other jobs internally, like um, you know, they 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 do their own advances, like when the president travels, you know, the agents presidential protection will do an, an advance and the uniform division will do one with them now they do work together sure. but they do have separate responsibilities interesting yeah for yeah. different things so. i always wondered that because then anytime you do go around 1600 and a half right. it's like it's it's there's always the uniformed yeah outside and i'm thinking like i always think it's one and the same you no. know it is kind of just different duties no no right right and and the um also park police is there too because they the, yeah that area is actually outside the fence line is a park yeah. So park police, the big presence there, and so so, what's the other one? There's the United States Secret Service Police. That's it. That's, that's the, the uniform. Yeah, division. that's the uniform division. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I'm always like, damn, they got they got the FBI police. Yeah. No, Everybody's the, got police. No, that's it. That's damn. the uniform division. Yeah. That's crazy. So originally they were the White House police. Back there's always been a uniform presence. It used to be soldiers back in the very beginning. Oh wow. Different units of soldiers. And I talk a little bit about in my second book, Secrets of the Secret Service. And then uh, uh, back around um, 1920, they got a group of metropolitan police officers, sure. park police police officers. They asked them if they wanted to be part of this new White House police. They were already the guys that were working those areas anyway. Yeah. And they, they, that's how it started. Wow. And then it, it started expanding. And then as it got bigger, the Secret Service agents already existed. Yeah. And they wanted more control over the access to the White House. And, and it was kind of over the years like – we made each other our own worst enemies. The, of course. The rift, you, right. Yeah, you're working so close. Yeah, you know, and, and we had different responsibilities, and, and everybody's got egos and arrogance, and, and we can get into this more when you want. No, yeah, but, no, I, I totally but, could so, see that anyway, happening. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. So you were from 91, so the start of Clinton to... The, I, well, I, I started with George H.W. Bush. Bush. I oh. came in with Papa Bush. Okay. And, and I left with uh, son Bush, and I had eight years of the Clintons in between. Damn. Yeah. So, yeah, I transferred in 2003 over to the Air Marshal Program oh, cool. after 9-11. So yeah. I felt like my skills could be – and I didn't realize it at the time, but I was kind of running away from the crap that had happened. Sure. I, I You know, I, my co-writer, Grant, I was telling you about earlier, Grant Schmidt, who helped me write the books. Uh, at one point, we were writing uh, – I think we were finished the, almost finished the first book, and he's like – you were running. I'm like, dude, I don't run from anybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, you know, typical. Oh, dare yeah. you, what are you, know, you talking about? I'm going to pound you into the ground. Yeah. You know, but, um, and, and, but as soon as he said it, and, and like I said, Grant's a, a, a friend. I've known sure. him a long time. His parents and I have been friends since, you know, the mid nineties. Yeah. And, and so anyway, um, so, uh, you know, as soon as he said, it, I'm like, okay, I kind of know what you mean, but walk me through it. And he's sure. like, you know, after that stuff happened in the West wing with the Clintons, you know, I worked outside the Oval office and, and after it happened with, with uh, Monica, you know, before it was public, 
you know, I, he lives his life however he wants to. I, I'm not his moral sure, compass. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, but I was uncomfortable what was going on, other things. And eventually I moved away. I went from the west, west wing to the east wing where the uniform division, one of the jobs they, other jobs they do, additional, is they do the tours for the first family. Got it. All the tour officers are uniform division officers. They're armed. Damn. They're you know they're wired with radios. They're they're controlling who's in and out. And so they had to literally give tours to the public. It's great. It's great. And it's, I never knew how much I slept through school until I took <laughs> you because they do You're like not, learning all this shit. They do not let you slide in. Yeah. With That's your crazy. knowledge, you mean that? that I'll t- as we talk more about it, um, I'll, I'll tell you some things that they had to change after a while. But um, you know, and I can't even say it's political correctness. It's just how times change. Sure, yeah, you know. But um, it was. Um, I never like. I, I was stunned. I, like, I called my parents one. And I'm like, I am so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I, am, yeah, you I have history. so little I know. <laughs> That's and, funny you say but, that. My yeah. buddy, my buddy Ben was a. Um, a tour guide in DC. Uh-huh. He had to have a bachelor's yes. degree. It, like no book. I'm thinking like he just rides around on a yes. Segway getting fifteen dollars an hour. Yes. He was like making like close to six figures yes. as like a tour guide. Yes. But he had to know his shit. He's now a he, Capitol Police he, officer. He, he, but yes. I, I was blown away. He's probably the most sought after guy because he knows the city in and out. Yeah. He, it's and he knows incredible. the history. He yeah. knows the history. He knows everything yeah. about it. Yeah. There was kind of my my downfall when I worked outside the Oval Office. I've studied the. There's always a, a small book of the history there um, put together by the White House Curator's Office. The White oh, House cool. has a curator's office. They're in charge of all the artifacts and history about the White House. It's a big deal. They're um, you know, part of the, the, the executive residence staff, which is separate from every part of the government. Sure. There's no GS scale in there. They oh, have wow. their own. It's like a cult. Really? I kid you not. Yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, and the only way you get that job is if your parents, you know somebody, someone. Of course, nepotism yeah. And, yeah. And, and you will never get it changed and i don't want you wow to. It, it i mean the, the 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 there's right now there's a there's a probably a 50 year old black lady working there as a cleaner yeah and her mother probably worked there and probably her grandmother wow. and, and and there's the chefs um all the same lineage. not so much the chefs yeah. completely but but very similar and in some cases identical and what i mean by that is wow. like sometimes when it comes to cooking food some people uh. I don't want to say bring their own chefs, but then there's a celebrity chef. Mrs. Clinton was fond of this guy. I forget his name now, but um, anyway, you know, once in a while. And but the the chefs, there's also the the Navy mess chefs that cook for the president over in the West Wing, but also augment the mansion oh, wow. staff when they need to. Damn! So they're it, cooking for everyone. Oh my God! You should see when they do a big event there. I mean, Damn. yeah. I mean, there's like as we move on in the interview. I, I mean, I can. I can try to do put together a whole day for you, like, and you pick the event, and I can wow. tell you. Yeah, it's crazy. So. That's insane. This just sounds like complete chaos because I've talked to a couple of people about specifically it's organized even, chaos. That's, that's exactly yeah, what people is. keep saying: is it's it organized is. It's chaos. It's organized chaos, and 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 if you name the crazy situation, it pro, it's hap, I mean, It's just crazy. It's yeah. just like I mean, uh, you know, I don't want to hijack your podcast. No, you, you direct it. No, but, listen, this but is how I'm, it goes. Man. I have no shortage of, of stories. Stories. It's just, and this. I mean, if I had a nickel for every story we had to throw out of the book because there wasn't room. Really? Oh my God! I, I could write. Grant and I could do ten books. Three more books. Yeah, easily. And and so the the my books are um, the formula that I was. I had to use was about 300 pages. That's about 80,000 words. Mm-hmm. So the first book, by the time a crisis of character, by the time we got our, an agent, which is Javelin and they're right on the other side of the Potomac in Virginia. Um, they got us a, a publisher, um, Hachette and their s- subsidiary was center street. And by the time, you know, we, we read the contract, we had lawyers and, and there's one little part we kind of overlooked was yeah. they were contracting us for 80,000 words. Oh, By the shit. time we stopped talking and writing, we had 165,000 words with his twice as Literally many. double. Yeah. Almost as, yeah. Oh, my God. So, we, And you could have kept going, probably. Oh, please. Yeah. You're, you'll, you'll, listen, by the time we're done this interview, you'll be kicking me out the yeah. door and locking the <laughs> latch in it and taking me off your... Oh, my God. So, um, yeah. Um, one of my... One of my um, 
gifts from gifts from uh, God or however you want to put it is uh, is uh, I, I enjoy telling the story and according to some people I'm, I'm pretty good at it. No, so. that's that's exactly what I want, anyways, and yeah. I, I really appreciate good storytellers. Yeah. So, so. L- look, man, I when I saw you on was it Fox had to be yeah, definitely Fox. Yeah, probably. CNN's probably not going to have you on. Well. Or unless they did one time, and then they were like, it wasn't about the book. Oh, okay. But they posted the picture of the book. Really? Yeah. Before they inter- they were interviewing me about a shooting in Florida. Oh shit. Because I'm all I also put myself out there as a subject matter expert sure, on sure. terrorism, anti-terrorism, law enforcement. Yeah. So there was a shooting at the Fort Lauderdale airport, and and I think all the news agencies that 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 um, kind of called me a liar when I first came out had heard that I had filed a suit or mm-hmm. that I was following a suit, a yeah. lawsuit. So CNN contacted me and asked me to, to talk about this shooting. And I did. And when, you know, they introduced me who I was, they put a picture of the book up. And how long do you think it was up there? A second, because they realized. Almost 14 seconds. What? Because they realized, like, oh, wait, this is a. My, my, one of the women that works for Javelin, Vanessa, and great people, these, um, she went with me to New York um, when the book first first book came out. We were up there for three days and then D.C. And so anyway, Vanessa, like she texts me afterwards. She goes, oh, my God, they left it up there for so long. I thought it broke. Oh, my God. <laughs> she goes, I thought the technician died or something. So it, it, must have been, it was at least seven seconds. Well, describe because yeah. well, people yeah. are like, why? What's the big deal about this? Book? Right. So, 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 so CNN Christ is, is typically character. left. Yeah. Fox is typically right. When you, you know, what I mean, typically how you yeah. get your news. Yeah. It's, it's always. No. And yeah. there's exceptions to the rule and stuff. Of course. But, but so um, my first book, Christ is a Character, is basically about the 12 years I was in the Secret Service. It focuses on the, Cl- the, the, the Clinton administration and the, and the Bill Clinton's impeachment scandal. And my unfortunate claim to fame is that I'm the first employee in the history of the Secret Service that was ever forced to testify against the president he was protecting. Oh, shit. I had to testify, testify against Bill Clinton and his impeachment scandal. Our case went all the way to the Supreme Court. What? Now, I write and tell the story pretty much like I was all by myself, but I was not. Yeah. I mean, I purposely never told anybody I was doing this because I never thought I would. And, and remind me to talk about that. Sure. But um, so... Uh, when I started writing, I didn't tell anybody. I, I tell the story from just my perspective, although I do talk about my coworkers and um, uh, quite a bit because they're the ones that were public figures because the same reason I was. Sure. You know, you can Google our names and, uh, you know, Bill Clinton, uh, although I hate this terminology, but it's unfortunately how it pulls up all of it is if you put Bill Clinton, Gary Burns, Secret Service, White House Guard, it pulls everything all up. C SPAN testimony and. Damn. It's crazy. So, um, so that's my claim to fame. I, I ended up testifying against Bill Clinton his impeachment scandal. It went all the way up to the Supreme Court. The chief of the Supreme Court at the time was Judge Rehnquist, and the Secret Service was trying to invent this thing called the protective function privilege, which was like a spousal privilege. You can't testify against your spouse, sure. that type of thing, because their, their fear was, and I agreed with them, was that you know if you were per- well, I agreed with them partially. If you were protecting somebody and they knew you could be compelled to testify and they were talking about something that they weren't sure was, it could have been shady or whatever, they would, would back away from you. Yeah, they're not going to talk and, about it. Yeah, and, 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 and in the Secret Service, in, in, pre, in protection, president, we'll talk about presidential protection. If you're further than this, that arm length, you may as well be a mile. What? If you are further than the, that closest agent to you, when he's further than that arm length, it's, there's a reason. And, and if he is that far away, then he knows that all the other concentric circles of security are on their toes. Yeah, they got it. Yeah. Everybody. Wow. Uh, from the counter sniper to the uniform division guys on the outer perimeter, you know, it's a big deal. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, so that was what it was about. And eventually the, the Supreme Court Justice Rehnquist um, decided that we had standing. In other words, he would consider it. And then eventually it failed, and then we all had to go and testify. Damn. But Did you want to testify? No, I didn't want to talk about anybody's bizarre sex life. Yeah. And when I say bizarre, look, Bill Clinton could live his life any way he wants, with the exception of the accusations of, of, of rape or assault. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody wants that. And, I, and I, you know, I'm not for any of that. But if you want to live your life as a married man and do hundreds of affairs, then that's on you. Yeah. I'm not your moral compass. Sure. Um, but he put himself in a position where he was living his life basically 
just like he did in Arkansas and like he always did. And he lied about it. He signed a, uh, the, the whole scandal was, you know, everybody wants to say it was about sex. It, it's not. Yeah. It's about suborning perjury. He signed an illegal affidavit saying, and this is, I talk about this a lot in the book and, um, the Bill Clinton method of doubling down. Not only does he say he never had an affair with her, but then he screws everybody in the Secret Service and says we were never and his and his own staff by saying we were not, never alone together either. Which all you knew that was obviously oh, please, not true. Listen, yeah. well, I'll, I'll I'll jump to the chase. Sure. There's a point where I have to testify testify about his semen in a towel. Oh my god. So how far where do you where do you how far do you think that went? How yeah, crazy, you yeah you're mean? definitely an arm yeah. length. And when you first time I tried to explain <laughs> the first time I, I, I brought it up, like the lawyers it, it was just the whole situation was crazy. Uh, I'll wait and won't get into the whole thing because I'll get you sidetracked. No, yeah, no, it's all good. I, this is totally like casual and okay, we'll, so, I jump around a lot too. So, so so back to the original thing. That's who I am. I wrote this first book, yeah. Price is a character. And uh um so the when the book when the book finally leaked out and the Clintons got a copy of it. Oh my god. Because yeah. we had um we had interviews with every mainstream media outlet out there until because the first CNN said, "Oh, send us a copy," and they're like, "Well, you have to sign confidentiality." They're like, "No, no, that's not necessary," because they wanted to leak it right away. Of course, but um, we said you have to sign a confidentiality. We're not going to give you a copy you. of it. Yeah. So they're like, "All right, well, we'll wait." So through a couple, somehow, anyway, copies got out a little bit early. A copy, um, but. Um, I will tell you that I wrote it in a way, again, I wasn't trying to burn down the entire government. Sure. I'm not trying to burn down the entire Democratic Party or the Secret Service. But I wanted to tell the truth. Yeah. I wanted to get out there what really happened. And, and, you know, during that time when it was happening, you know, everybody was attacking Monica Lewinsky and, and, and the right was attacking Bill Clinton. And, and, and the left, the Democrats were attacking us, the Secret Service, too. Yeah, sure. And all we were doing was following directions yeah. and following the law. And, and you know, writing the book wasn't to be spiteful, but it was to get the truth out. And this is really what was happening behind the scenes. President Clinton has his version. Monica has her version. I will tell you, everything I've heard and said and read what she said, I watched her TED Talk and everything, she's painfully, painfully honest. I winced, and I was there. Yeah. But... She certainly tries to soften up the point, part where, and, and I talk about this d- deeply in the book, she put herself in that position. She circumvented all her security. She was friending people to get herself near Bill Clinton. Yeah. And, and, and I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and say originally it was before, originally it was probably to be uh, climb the ladder, get herself a paying sure, job. Sure, sure, and, sure. And that's fine. Yeah. But let me put it to you this way. At the time that that scandal happened, there were 200 White House interns. Name me another one. <laughs> right. See? There you go. And I said that to people. Sometimes they're like, well, why would I know? I'm like, right. Exactly. Yeah. You, no one really knows the White House <laughs> interns right. ever. Right. You know? So I've, they're not even supposed to be over in the, in the West Wing. But yeah. to be more user-friendly, which you'll hear me say that a lot. Yeah. That's so funny. What? That was a Mrs. Clinton thing. They need to be more user-friendly. They're very police-like. I remember you saying something about... Because your book is heavy on, on, on Monica and Bill, but it's yeah. also... Hillary on how yeah. she's kind of not fit to do certain right. things. That was the whole thing is, was, so I never, if you'd have asked me, you know, when I worked there or even when I first started and transferred over to the air marshals, if I would write a book, I left in your, I would laugh in your face. Yeah. And even if you were a friend and said, you know, I hate the I fuck wanna, out of here. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, dude, you don't know, have a clue what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and, um, my wife would never go for it is what I would have also said. Yeah. And through the years, people who wrote books about it have come contacted me and asked me for information. I refused. I refused everybody. I refused different interviews. Um, I considered one one time um, when I first left the air marshals, but I was uncomfortable with, um, I felt like I was, I felt like I was being tested. Being like set up almost? Sort of. Yeah. yeah. Sort of. And, and it turned out later on that that wasn't true, but you know, Still, no, no. I'm very suspicious. I've I was been say, you got to go with your gut. Oh, dude, I am, I am so, so yeah. Listen, when I went past your house, like I went past. Oh, really? I looked around. <laughs> I went down to the end of the street. I was a little early. I went down the end of the street. I saw a metropolitan car, so I backed into that dead end. 
And then this this woman walked by with a dog, yeah. and I could see her. She looked twice at me. Yeah. So I got out of the car. I stood next to my on my truck. You know, I said hi to her because she was like, "Who's this dude?" Who's this? Like, yeah, because everyone kind of knows. Was locked up. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, holy so, shit. So I um, you fucking scoped me out. Make sure I'm not <laughs> right. Like Hillary doesn't pop out of my cabinet. Well, I wasn't expecting <laughs> that. I was kidding. But uh, but but you know, you never know. We joke. Yeah. I mean, we everybody. Sure. You know, so um, so I never thought I would do this, wow. but um. You know, I, I left in 2003. I transferred to the Air Marshals, and I started seeing things differently. I, you know, and, and I, I equate this to I wasn't drinking the Kool Aid anymore. Uh, I wasn't, you know. And listen, when I was in the Secret Service, I mean, they're just they're unhappy with me now. They don't want anybody writing books sure. about them. Of course not. Who doesn't? I mean, why right. Would want there were no there was no confidentiality agreement at the time, and really? I'm not letting. Yeah, there was not. Holy shit. There was later on, and then when, the day after my book came out, they, they were like, signed another one. Yeah. They actually stopped people from retiring. If they didn't sign it? I got more FUs burned than... From that. <laughs> from that, guys. Yeah. They were losing their minds. I'm wow. like, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, wow. I, but listen, my freedom of speech is no different than anybody else's. Of course. So, I mean, are there things that aren't in that book? I guarantee you they are. Yeah. There's nothing classified. I was very careful. And I'm not trying to... Listen... There's, I can probably think of 20 people on the Clinton staff that at the time, if they were on fire, I wouldn't have urinated on them. Yeah. But, yeah. and you know, I say that, but I know, I know, you yeah. know what I mean? Of I'm, course, you're joking. They were jackasses. They yeah. were arrogant. I I cannot, to this day, if I'm flipping through the channels and I see George Stephanopoulos' books on TV, <laughs> I say something derogatory about yeah. him. Now, George. George, the man that's married to his wife, that's a father, is probably a decent guy. But the, the political pundit that he really is he, you know he's not a newscaster yeah no and, and guys you people your age probably think he is he's not yeah he's uh, a, no, i'm familiar with yeah him. yeah, yeah. yeah with his he's story. an operative and, and, and uh, but he's a smart dude yeah Listen, he's very smart yeah i will say this I, I always said this about stephanopoulos paul begala stephanopoulos paul begala Rahm Emanuel, and uh, james carvel if they were heart surgeons or if they were cancer surgeons there'd be no cancer wow they'd have cured it yeah i mean they were good at what they did they took this draft dodging, skirt chasing, knucklehead from Arkansas and made, and made this dude president for eight years. And crazy? people today still worship him. Yeah, no, but people like love Bill Clinton. They love him. Yeah, and they think it's almost it's almost cool that he you know, obviously he didn't get impeached, but but well, he did get impeached. He I know, didn't get removed. It removed. Yeah, right that's now, what I mean. You're yeah. right. Like same things that happened to Trump. So sort of, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. So well, not in that cheating scandal, but, but as far as the right, process. they they. they um, they didn't remove him. Well, here's the thing. Let me ask you this. Why do you think they didn't remove him? Why didn't I? Yeah, why didn't they remove uh, Bill Clinton? Was it because the, the House or the Senate at the time was the Democratic Party and they're not just going to let their, their candidate be removed from the yeah, White House? Yeah, that's what they want you to know. Oh, shit. That's right. what they want you to believe. Um, just like the Republicans are saying now, and I agreed with it back then, and I agree with it now, don't use a political lynching to remove a vote of the American people. Okay. Now, I don't see President Trump have, have, having doing anything wrong, really. But Bill Clinton, I, I was there. I literally watched it happen. Yeah. I knew, you know, so. But I didn't want him removed. I kept this to myself I because I knew he was lying. I knew he was crooked. I knew a lot of things that aren't even in the book that I'll never talk about. But, you know, technically speaking, I don't remember, don't remember the percentages, but, you know, half this country wanted them in the office. Yeah. And that's fine. Wow. Because someday I get my vote, mm -hmm. you know, and I've always vote. When you're in the Secret Service, you, you go in there and you, you hammer yeah. that thing. You're like, yeah. that son of a bitch. Yeah. Here, you know, <laughs> get him out of here. So, but anyway, um, excuse me. But um, so um, I didn't I didn't want like him to be removed. But here's why he really wasn't. And, and the Democrats are just so good at this. You know, you've heard the term opposition research. Sure. So by the time, like, even before the evidence of the blue dress came, where they knew there was DNA and he, sure. had, he couldn't lie anymore. Yeah. They already had a list of 20 senators that were having affairs. Both they were going to Democrats blow up. They, you said it. And, but the term that they use, it's an old military term, scorched earth. We will scorch earth all 20 of you, Republicans, Democrats, we have Bro. video, we have, and now nobody knows this and nobody admit it. I know because I was there. Yeah. I was there when it was, when stuff was happening. Sure. I know they used to, it used to crack me up the crap they would say out in the hallway. 
and and, and some of it's protected. You know, there's it's not classified stuff. I used to see and hear all the time, and that's why my clearance was so high. It was mm-hmm. actually above when you're on presidential protection or you have my post or a couple other uniform division posts. Your clearance is actually above top secret. Top secret, yeah. And um, because it's your job when you work outside the Oval Office, if the president leaves something classified out, to scoop it up. And get rid- if yeah. the staff's not there, you put it in your safe. The, the officer has a safe on his post. Sure. Whereas uh, the, for other stuff too makes but, sense. So anyway, um, but uh, yeah, so that's why he wasn't removed. Wow. They want you to believe it was because the American people and he really wasn't guilty. Listen, no, he was cares? totally guilty. He, he was. Yeah, yeah. And who cares what he does with his sex life? But you got you got used to lying. You always got away with it. Yeah. And it caught up on you. Yeah. And. I don't have a lot of sympathy for him, but at times I did. And I used to catch myself and say, you know, because I talk about it in the book. And actually, I had this, we removed this in the book. Like, I, I tell this story where um, it's not during the the impeachment. It's during the um, the government shutdown. And uh, Newt Gingrich is down there with all the Republicans, and they're trying to hammer this out. And, um, you know, the Clintons, and they're trying to stick to their guns and, Anyway, one day, like, it's all over. It's in the evening. It's about 5.30, and everybody leaves. All the Republicans leave, and most of the staff is left, and, and he's by himself in the Oval Office. And, I, and, and the door was left open, so I went over to close the door. And as I'm closing the door, the agent, like, like puts a hand up. And I'm like, what? And, and so I look in there, and, and, and he walks up behind me, and we're both looking in there. And, he, and, and then, you know, he said, close the door, and I, I close the door. And he goes, I'm going to tell you something. That's the saddest thing I've seen in a week. Damn. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, look, do you, what did you see? I said, he looked incredible in Lee. He goes, he goes, I'm not a fan of, of their politics. He goes, but I feel for this guy yeah, right now. Because he's still human, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, like I said, when people say to me, tell me what the Clintons are really like. I'm going to ask, I'm going to give you a question to ask me. Of course. No, tell me what the Clintons are really yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. If President Clinton was here, Bill Clinton, crack a beer open, yeah, be no. a fun time. Yeah, play the saxophone. <laughs> do not it. let him drive your 27-year-old niece home. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Hillary. I, I, it hurts me to say this as a Catholic, a Christian, but she doesn't really have any redeeming values. Isn't. She doesn't. I'm sorry. She and and me. when people, you know, I, I I have, I know people that that still like them, and they they're like, well, that's just your opinion. I'm like, yeah, it's my opinion based on history. Yeah. She's crazy evil. She's a dictator. She screams and yells at people, and she can't even tell you why. Wow. Come on. If you're under that much, if that's the way you handle pressure, find another lifestyle. Yeah, imagine being a, yeah. a, a, a president. Yeah, so so let's let's move on to kind of yeah. Hillary and, yeah. and your, not not your hatred to her, because you just. No, I don't hate her. No, I know. It, you, yeah. you lived through it. You, yeah. you saw, yeah. listen, I've worked in, it's different, I've worked in in a corporate job and this and that where it was right. ran by a dictator and but everyone else all the clients everyone knew and thought that it was fucking you know peaches and cream like it was easy it was right. smooth it was fun to work right. there it's totally miserable right. hated it getting screamed at every day so like I can only imagine on that level you right. know what I mean so kind of but like how you uh, reverted earlier to you, you kind of like scoping my house out making yeah. sure everything's legit yeah. like yeah the Clintons I know, and me and my buddies always talk about it on my conspiracy episodes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Are like, we're scared of the Clintons because right. you know what I mean. They have that 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 body count, right. and stuff like that. So I can only imagine someone who writes a book about them. Right. What the fuck, man? So, like, so the uh, the old um, Richard Nixon's uh, Secretary of State was uh, tells his name. He's still alive. He had a Russian name. Uh, not Yastrzemski. Uh, Anyway, he was famous for saying, somebody was asking him a question about Nixon being paranoid, and he said, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. So, oh, shit. So here's my thing on the take on the Clintons. Um, when I first was asked to write this book, my co-writer, Grant Schmidt, mm-hmm. he's a graduate from Temple Film School. It was uh, about 2013 or 14. He needed a new project. He had this small film company called Flynn Films. He'd done some videos. Commercials um, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, did a really good Holocaust um, video a video on the Holocaust. Grant's um, most of Grant's family is Jewish, and his mother's side of the family, which is Jewish, um, most of them didn't survive the Holocaust. Oh wow! So uh, you know, it did definitely a, a s- sensitive subject. Yeah, passion project for pa- sure. Passion. I, yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, I'm a filmmaker too. So yeah, I- right. So so he did one, and they went to Israel. Basically, they oh, interviewed. Cool. Who was still living there and left, and who what? ran the Israel 
after they survived the Holocaust. That's sick. And, yeah. That's cool well, shit. It was cool, though. It was, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and there was some funny, heartwarming stuff in it. So anyway, that's who Grant is. So he comes to me and he says, hey, my parents and I have this ideal. We want you, it's like 2013 or 14. We want you to write your life story and, and um, you know, I'm, I'm going to help you do it. Sure. Gonna, it's going to be a great, successful book. And I'm like, no, it's not yeah. going to happen. <laughs> and then he's like, what? I said, I'm not interested. You don't know what you're asking. It's a tough time for myself, my my wife. You know, um, it, 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 you, you don't have a clue what you're asking. Oh, it'd be this and that. And his, so his parents, they invited me up to dinner at their house. They live in, um, outside of Philadelphia, close to where I am. Uh, his dad's a, a nor- um, not a neurosurgeon. His dad is a orthopedic oncologist mm-hmm. and a surgeon and um, orthopedic surgeon and an oncologist. And uh, they live a very high lifestyle. Oh, yeah. They work. They are blue collar rich. I call it. They oh, wow. work. I mean, this poor guy does 40 surgeries a month. Yeah. And he's 60. Got to be pushing 64. Jesus. Great people. Anyway. So I'm like, you don't understand what you're asking, but they're good friends, and I've known them for a long time. I've actually met them at the White House. So you trust them? I do. We hunt together. We, we, we vacation together. They're very generous. And so anyway, I'm like, all right, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll you know, I'm going to eat your steak and drink your booze, and we're going to mm-hmm. talk about it. I'll give you four months. And in four months, you have to discover, use that time to do a little research and realize what you're asking me. Yeah. Two, I'm not even sure I can do it legally. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I said, and three, why do I want to torture my wife again? And they're like, what? I said, this was horrendous for Jenny. Yeah. We were pregnant with our first child, Elizabeth. It was a nightmare. People were knocking on our doors, yeah, reporters. Threads. Yeah, there may have been. There Literally, there may have been. But, like, I don't – and this goes to your – you know, your, just to remind your original question is, is kind of about the Clintons and my fear of them or do I have a fear of them. And, and, and I didn't then. And when I wrote the – decided to write the book, I decided if I – Nothing happened to me by the till the time the book came out. As soon as it came out, I was fine because I wasn't trying to burn down everybody. Sure, I told the truth. I told I talked about what was already public, for the most part. Um, nothing classified. Nothing to upset the the security services of the United States. I mean, the Secret Service, I'm sure, would love to burn me in effigy. Yeah. Um, but um, and, and that may be a little overstated, but you know what I mean. They're not happy about yeah, it. Yeah, of course. But but. They, um, it is what it is. Uh, the Air Marshal Service, same thing, because most of the management came from the Secret Service, and we'll uh-huh. talk about that later. So um, I knew that, like, I, it's, it's, easy to, it's, easy, it's easy to intimidate Kathleen Willey. It's easy to intimidate Monica Lewinsky. It's easy to intimidate, you name them. Um, what's that woman in Ark from Arkansas that... Um, Accused President Clinton of raping her back in the day when he was in Arkansas. Yeah, he yeah. was the governor of Arkansas. Yeah, I don't remember her name. Either. Yeah, it'll come to me. Juanita Broderick. Yep. Broderick, is that right? Yeah. It's Juanita. Juanita, I think it is. Yeah. So, um, they're easy to intimidate, not because they're women, but because they're, you know, he's the governor or the president, and they they see themselves as the little people. I, I don't see myself yeah. that way. Yeah. I've been carrying firearms and protecting. Everything from our nuclear arsenal to the people that run our country since I was 19 years old. Yeah. So I'm not painting myself as a tough guy, but, you know, um, I'm desensitized to a point of where I'm almost numb about certain things. Sure, of course, yeah. And I'm not saying that's always good. No, you I always have you, to be, yeah. Yeah, and at times, though, you have to check yourself. A couple of times, you know, if you want to talk about this later, when I was an air marshal, I caught myself being just a little too cold to society. Really? You, where you had to reel back in a little bit. Yeah. And, and um, because, you you know, regardless of what your job is, you still need to be a decent human being. And so anyway, but I, I didn't, that was not my fear so much as the Clintons was just raking my name through the mud. And, really? And my family's, yeah, because, listen, up until I wrote that book, if you'd have gone to the people I worked with in the Secret Service all the way up to the directors and said, hey, did you know Gary Byrne? They would not have a bad thing to say about me. Yeah, they I was going to say, me. you probably were like a stand-up uh, I guy. Loved it. Yeah. Listen, I, I joked earlier about drinking the Kool-Aid. Dude, mm-hmm. I was mixing it, handing it yeah, yeah. I loved it. <laughs> if not Jim 11, Jones. Here, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. If 9-11 hadn't happened, mm-hmm. um, I would have stayed there. I mean, really? I might have, might have had an aneurysm or a heart attack or a stroke from yeah. stress. And, and the, the work, they're, you know, they just work you to death. And that was one of the things I want to... I wanted to mention was, you know, you talk about the stress 
of working around the Clintons and stuff, the, the real stress in that job is the stress that the Secret Service puts on you. Hmm. So just real quick, if they need 100 people to do something, they use 60, and they work that 100 in overtime until they die. Really? Yeah, that's they've always done it. They're still doing it. They try to deny it, but, you know. How is that even efficient or effective? It's you know not. I mean? It's not, like, but that's the way we've always done it. Wow. They, listen, if, they, if somebody in the very beginning took a hammer and smashed their thumb every day, they'd still be doing it. Wow. In some cases. It's just crazy. Yeah, but yeah. Um, So anyway, my, that wasn't my real fear. The, the, my, my co-writer, Grant Schmidt, like he was a little concerned about it. I'm like, either we're going to do this or we're not. Yeah. But, well, I'm sorry. At this point, I, I, I had told them no. Yeah. But I was going to give them four months to research. And so after two months, Grant and I, um, and, and I told him, I said, look, I'm not a writer. I'm a shitty writer. I have, a, you know, I have ADD and dyslexia. Same. Yeah, same. I'm a train wreck when it comes yeah. to that. I wrote like a cop. Who, where, when, why, how. Yeah. <laughs> I can take an incident that took seven hours and I can put it in three long, yeah. you know, two paragraphs and, you know, that's it. Yeah. And then there's nothing else in there. So, um, but, um, so I gave him a writing example and, and, um, and I, I told him some stories and, and so um, I said, you know, there's a couple always, always and never going to happen. Mm-hmm. You never, ever have to expand or exaggerate on anything. I said, my life is unbelievable as it is. I'm a kid that barely got out of high school, and I stood inside the Oval Office for years. Yeah. I worked outside it. Presidents, I can't say they knew my name. Yeah. But they said, hey, boy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. They were, and, and I said, and that doesn't happen to a lot of people. Yeah. I said, no. I sail under a magic star. Um, you don't need to expand on anything. Um, you know, I am not trying to burn down. When I say no, it means no. I'm not going to debate it. If I want, if something has to be a certain way and you don't understand why, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Yeah. Because there's things I'm never going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a lot, but there's stories that you're never going to hear. And if we stumble onto them, I'm going to back up. I'm going to tell you to destroy the tape or whatever, or, or you know, we're done. Wow. But I am not, you know, I, I don't need to just. Dis- I can tell my story without upsetting, without ruining. Like I said, there's people on that staff, and even some of the people in the Secret Service, some of these agents that were just complete jackasses. Um, 20 years later, 25 years later, do I really need to disrupt their life and embarrass yeah, them? Like, I do yeah. not. Yeah. I do not. It's not It's not right. It's not fair. And it's abusing, in some ways, it's almost abusing your privilege of speech. Sure. So, and, and you know, so anyway, um, after two months, we had three working chapters and a forward. And, um, I was flying home from Germany one night and I completely flipped the other way. I, I like, decided, fuck uh, it. <laughs> almost. I mean, oh, but, but more, like, I'm like, you know, I'm like, what do I do? Like if she runs, this is, you know, this is way before we knew. I mean, I knew she was going yeah, I mean, everybody, yeah. but, they said it up, but you had no idea that president Trump was going to be the nominee. That was crazy. No, nobody knew. Yeah. That was crazy. I mean, I, four months before, I guaranteed it. I, I knew it. Yeah. And I'll, I can tell you about that sure. later. So, but, um, so, um, I'm flying home from Germany one night. I'm on, you know, a Boeing 767, you know, everybody's asleep. The only four people that are awake are the damn air marshals. Everybody's the planes dark except for the four spotlights where we're sitting there reading. Yeah. And, um, wait, you were an air. Mar- oh yeah. Air yeah. Marshal. I was an air marshal. Yeah. Right. Oh, I have. Right. Oh, that's cool. From 2003 to 2016. Right. I have yeah. questions on that later. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so I'm reading through it and, and I'm, I'm I literally, I'm staring out the window, looking at the moon and I'm like, crap, if I'm in a unique position to tell our side of the story. And if I don't, and she becomes president and she's probably going to become president anyway. Yeah. But if I don't, tell the truth and some time down the road you know the gov- some arm of the government is marching out my front door with my firearms how do I look my kids in the eye yeah. and say maybe I could have done this yeah you know how do you and and I have you know like every parent I have this huge emotional attachment to my children but just to kind of fill you in from my mind's a little odd the day we brought Elizabeth home from the hospital is the day that Congress released our depositions about Bill Clinton's impeachment to C-SPAN. Jesus Christ. Everything we said about him got released. I was, it was unbelievable. Um, wow. When Elizabeth and Ethan, Elizabeth was, they're four years apart. She was 12, he was eight. She was working on a project, a history project at school, and the subject was the federal government or something. 
and and it had something to do with Bill Clinton or something. It wasn't about the scandal. Yeah. And I'm of like, of course not. Yeah. So I sit them down, you know, on the couch, and I hand Elizabeth my my Mac, and I go, you know, Google these words: Bill Clinton, Gary Byrne, White House guard. She she goes and she goes, well, Dad, you know, I know that you. I said, well, okay, you know, here's what you have to understand: I did nothing wrong. My coworkers, we did nothing wrong ever. Yeah. We followed the law. Somebody else's bad behavior sucked us into their weird life, mm-hmm. the president's life. We did nothing wrong. We'd followed the law. We resisted as long as we could. When we finally had to tell the truth, it was that or be prosecuted ourselves. And I said, if you are researching this and you're not careful, you can end up on, a, on a, an adult yeah, site. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, or go down a rabbit hole Right, so that's my, that's my weird connection to this. We were pregnant with our first child when they were attacking me. Um, we bring her home from the hospital, and they release something that should have never been released. Really? No. What, what, I mean, they were going to find him guilty anyway. Yeah. But I understand why they did it. The Republican House did it. They wanted to beat Bill Clinton to the ground. And, and I'm not saying it's right, but it tells you why they're doing what they're doing now. Part of the motivation is they're trying to make Bill Clinton not look as bad as he does, whether it's true or not. Yeah. And you mean today in today's yeah today's you know what I mean the, the, this thing you see going on with Epstein yeah with, no with oh. with with uh, President Trump oh okay yeah you yeah. know what I mean like yeah. th- this is why they're so venomous because unfortunately we don't have congressional term limits and the same jackasses are still there yeah yeah, yeah. so and I mean on the both sides of the aisle uh, yeah yeah listen I am a conservative but there, most of the cons- the way I'm a conservative a constitutional conservative there's not many of them yeah in the in that sure, house sure. you know in that in Congress but anyway. So um, I want to talk about that too if, later, later on about his uh, yeah his Epstein involvement because I'm sure because I've I've talked to a bunch of people yeah on camera and off camera I can camera. fill you a little bit in I mean you know what I know and I don't know anything earth shattering but but I can reinforce probably some things you already believe or know yeah no it's just anyways go ahead yeah that's all right so, so you guys were two 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 months in you have three chapters yeah three chapters and I completely flipped the other way and I'm like if I don't tell my story, I'm in a unique position that job loved me they, I did a good job for them. They're not going to like it. They're going to call me a liar. But the facts are all there. Yeah. You just have to look it up. We're going to put it in a book. And, you know, I thought about, you know, okay, can I do this legally? I had done some research. I knew there were no confidentiality agreements. Because what I did was I, I, had, what I, I had what I signed when I transferred from the – when I left the Secret Service to the Air Marshal, it was just a transfer. Mm-hmm. Literally on January 12th, 2003 – at 12 o'clock at night, or at 0001, I became an air marshal. Oh, wow. Like, it was just a transfer. I took everything with me. Interesting. My pay was better. My sure. retirement was better. Yeah. Which, with truthfully, I insinuated earlier, when it's half the truth, um, was or half the story is, I transferred over to the air marshals because of patriotism, because we were attacked, yeah. and because I was an angry white guy with a handgun. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm pretty goddamn good with it. Even though I do say so myself. So, and I also, somewhere along the line when I was in the Air Force, I decided I was expendable. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean expendable for no reason, but for that flag, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, um, and, you know, it, for me, it's, it's family, country, my God, my family, my country. They're interchangeable depending sure. on what's going on at the time. Yeah. And um, so um, I decided that, that, um, that I had to do this. And I was so... But I knew there was a lot of hurdles, and I knew I didn't couldn't afford to do it on my own. So, like I said, Grant's parents, um, my dad's a surgeon. He was the head of some Pennsylvania organization for doctors, and they were trying to get tort reform. You know, the, the reform the laws of people being able to sue a doctor because their hand doesn't work when he operated on their foot. Sure. You know, and, and yeah, yeah. That, you know. Frivolous lawsuits. I've had three open heart surgeries, so I'm familiar oh, with surgery. Oh my god, surgeons. you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Dude, yeah. you're still t- yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. so um, uh, so he, um, I went to them and I said, okay, if we can, you know, let's let's move forward on this as far. Let's have a conversation if we were to move sure. forward. I, I can't spend a dime on this. Every dime I sp- have saved in my retirement is for my kids to go to college. Yep. Because I didn't go to college, and they're going to whether they have to go through the emergency room first. They're going to college, yeah. <laughs> and and. Um, so, so far with Elizabeth, she's already in her third year at the University of Delaware. So, we're nice. right there. Yeah, good. Ethan, he might be going through the emergency room yeah. first. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, so we, 
they're like, okay, you know, I said, he said, listen, I spend a lot of money every year on politicians. He goes, I'm going to stop doing that and oh. I'm going to use it for my friend to tell his story. Oh, wow. So, and I, you know, I got this huge, one thing you're going to find about, about me as we do this is I, I'm very emotional. Yeah. You know, I laugh when I'm happy. I, I fight when we have to and, uh, and I get teared up. And, yeah. uh, no, so, so human, my buddy, so. yeah, my buddy, like, he's like, you, he goes, look, you're an angry guy. Yeah. Not all the time, but you are angry about that. He goes, and, and you know, the reason they knew what they did because we hunted together, you know, we'd be up at hunting camp. We'd be hunting all day in the evening or sitting around the fire, literally over the bonfire outside, yeah. you know, having a, uh, an adult drink or two. And, um, you know, somebody would, somebody that didn't know me or something would say something political. And I go, no, that's not, that's yeah. not even and they're like, why would you know? I'm like, well, I worked there and blah, blah, blah or whatever. And yeah. So that I would tell a story from time to time. And, and, you know, no matter what the story is, when it's about the White House or about something like that, that most people are removed from. I mean, I can tell you a story about the time my wife and I stole, not stole, but took napkins out of the bathroom at the White House because yeah. I had to, people did it all the, the time. The seal. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. people get excited about it. So yeah. that, that's just, you know, and I, I, I realized that because I was a guy who gave tours at the White House. So, you know, we, we got to the point where I, you know, he said, I'll, you know, you won't have to, I said, you could end up spending 20 grand before we even get told no. Yeah. That nobody wants to do this. And um, he said, I will do it. I, he said, um, I will sign something. I'm like, no, your word is your word. So I went home to my wife and I gave her, well, no, like that took place later. But so the, 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 I come home from the flight where I decide, you know, from Germany. Germany yeah. Right. And, and, um, you know, I, sh a wife of an air marshal is like a, a single mother. Literally, yeah. yeah. It's like, and the wife of uh, somebody in the Secret Service, a lot of law enforcement wives. Yeah. Even local municipalities, they're single mothers. Are you guys still married? Oh, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Because yeah. I no, know but the divorce rate is ridiculous. It is, and the suicide rate is will Even break higher. your heart. I know, yeah. It will. And, yeah. Um, but the, yeah, the, suicide, the divorce rate is crazy. Yep. One of the things that helps is you're there so little, you have no time to fight. Yeah. So, yeah. so um or argue so, but you. One of the things, and I, I, if anybody's watching this and you're in law enforcement, when the way your wife runs the house, that's the way it has to run. Yeah. Do not come home and decide you're going to fuck be, shit up when you come home. Do not yeah. shit on the kitchen counter. Yeah. Right. Do listen. We had two kids. I would come home. I'd pull into the driveway, and my wife would be standing on the back patio with her car keys in her hand. I'm like, "Hey, how you doing?" She's come. She'd wait for me to walk over. She'd kiss me. She'd say, "I'm going to the grocery store." Don't call me unless somebody dies. Yeah. You know, she just needed that hour away. Of course. It's yeah. not like she was going to a bar. She's going to the grocery no, yeah, store yeah. to shop for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that was our typical life. So I come home. She's waiting on the patio. And, you know, I have that look on my face. She's like, what happened? I'm like, nothing happened. It's not work. She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, we need to talk. She goes, what is it? I said, well, where are you going? She goes, well, I'm, I'm going to the store. I'm like, all right. I, I pulled the the chapters out. I said, I need you to read this. She goes, Oh, is this a shit with Grant? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. She goes, Oh, I can't read it now. I'm like, she could put it inside. Yeah. I'm like, all right. So I put it on the counter. You know, she has this pile on the kitchen counter. Sure. If I want to put something into the pile to get it into the yeah. rotation, yeah. <laughs> that's where you put it. You know, if I go to the cash machine, if yeah. I took out money, I just slip the thing. That's on where it there, is. And it just gets into her <laughs> rotation. Again, don't screw don't, your shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mess it up. No. Yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, I go on another trip. You know, I'm home two days. I, you know, I'm sure like I went into Ethan's class and, and read a book to the kids at his school and then did something with Elizabeth, tried to jam everything you don't get to do in, in two, two days. days. Yeah. And then probably to Israel or someplace else in or England. And so I come back from that trip and she said, um, I, I know what your problem is. And I said, what's my problem? And I didn't un even understand what yeah, she meant. Like, what? Right. I, I thought it was just like, I'm like, what's, oh shit, what's the problem? Yeah, yeah. You know, what, if I, uh -oh, what did she what find What did out? I do? Yeah. I go, shit. Yeah. So that is even a phone open or something. Yeah, literally. So, yeah. So um, she has, um, I read, I read it. She said, I cried. Oh, and shit. I said, you cried like I'm going to kill Grant and my husband? Or you cried like this has to be done? She said, it has to be done. She said, but you do, do, do realize they're going to take your pension. Oh shit! And I said, I do. I I know it's a consideration. I said, what you have to come to the grips with is that we can survive without it, because they're going to hammer me into the ground. Yeah. And I and but she's the one like she had already come up with a similar analogy of, you know, if that woman ever becomes president and such and such happens, 
how are you going to look yourself in the mirror? I yeah. said, well, I'm not worried about looking in the mirror. I'm worried about looking at the kids yeah. and you. And um, it was a pretty, it was a pretty husband and wife tender moment. I mean, not like, you know, mostly tender, but like, like, um, it, it, it I don't. Like I'm not a really ride sure. Or die, man. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Like, I, 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 I can't really frame another time when we were like that. You know, um, maybe um, one time when we, um, in between Elizabeth and Ethan, we had a miscarriage. Mm-hmm. Maybe then that was like that kind of emotion. Sure. Where you wanted to cry but you couldn't, or yeah. you, you know, you were so, the emotions were so strong that you, you're not even sure how to frame them. And yeah. so, um, and that's the way I felt. But I was exhilarated at my wife's patriotism and her courage and her and her belief in in me and, and grant yeah and um especially grant no yeah God. yeah <laughs> we, we pick on him all the time but yeah. he's, he's especially yeah, i know what you mean. so um so anyway damn that's cool though i called grant up and i go um hey you know on my two days off i would go to his office he had this small office at the time right down the road from me and we would meet and talk and and, and i would edit stuff and, and like i mean 60 percent of the stuff he gave me at first i'd throw out yeah and he too much Mickey Spillane, yeah. You know, too much Tom Clancy, yeah. Um, I'll tell you a quick funny story. Don't let me get too sidetracked. No, you're good. The Tom so, Clancy, yeah. So, well, no, this is uh, oh. so one one time Grant comes. Um, we're almost done the book, and we're getting close. And and um, he hands me this chapter stuff to read. He goes, "Hey, I rewrote this late last night. I was up all night. I haven't slept. You know." Just take it home and, and uh, you know, can you come back tomorrow? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'll come back tomorrow. No problem, you know. So I take it. I go home. He goes to bed, whatever. So I'm reading it. I'm like, I don't even, like, rip it up. I just, I just write on the top of it. Great movie. Yeah. So we get, the next day I come over. He's to the office. He's in a little bit better shape. You know, he's feeling himself with caffeine. And, and I hand it to him. He goes, Oh yeah, it would make a great movie. I go, no, dumbass. That's a scene from In the Line of Fire. <laughs> he goes, no, it's not. I go, Grant, what were you watching last night when you were the night you were writing this? He goes, I don't know, whatever was on the TV. Yeah. I go, was Clint Eastwood in it? Yeah. He goes, yeah. I said, yeah, it's In the Line of Fire, you dumbass. What? It's a scene from In the Line of Fire. So he was literally like just not paying attention. He's a very, very intelligent guy. That's so and funny. But he's 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 like me. He's got some, I don't know. It's just he's a funny. He's a quirky guy. Yeah. And so he's, he starts reading. And he goes, "No, I'm like Grant. Do I need to pull the scene up in the movie?" Yeah. You're like, "This never happened said, to Grant, me." Have you ever <laughs> heard me say that I've shoot, shot at somebody? <laughs> Actually, shot, you know, I mean, I, I you know, I pulled my gun out and you yeah. know, rough people up and yeah, yeah. You know, but I never I, had he goes, open fire. He goes, oh, "Holy shit!" Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah." The fact that you knew that though, reading it, and you're like, "Wait, this is, this is Clint Eastwood." This is no, I knew it right yeah, away. Yeah. I'm like, "No, that's pretty no, cool." No, I'm like, "Oh, wait, yeah, wait." I think that's when um, "Reach what, for the Skies." What, what, what? Was no. what was the woman's name? Renee Russo was she? No, was that who was the woman in it? Renee Russo. Anyway, I'm like, I think that's when she yells over the thing, "Take that's the so shot." Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So, what if that would have? What if you would have bypassed that by accident? Oh or no! The fucking well, I, I shouldn't say that could never happen because seven, at least seven people before before the book was released, at least ten people read it multiple times through, mm-hmm. and there are still mistakes there. You really? just cannot on, I mean, any book. Yeah. Haven't oh. you ever read a book and found? Dude, well, I, I kind of don't read books. Actually, I have a ton of books. I just yeah. never read them. Do you listen to them? I, listen I, to them? I listen to podcasts, and I, I'm, a, I'm a, like, if there's a book out, I'll right. watch the movie because right. I'm just a, like. Yeah, like I said earlier. Books I, are always better, I though. didn't start reading until I was about 18 or 19. The, the military, my father belonged to the military book club, and they sent him a, the first Tom Clancy book, The Hunt for an October. Yeah. And my dad didn't want to read it because it was fiction. Yeah. So he said, here. So I'm like, oh, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm not reading that shit. So anyway, I was flipped it, started flipping through it. I'm like, wow. this is fucking awesome. I never put it down. Yeah, I didn't put it down for days. My yeah. mom's like, are you sick? Why aren't you going? Out no, yeah. Talk? See, now that the hunt for October, the movie with I think it was Sean Connery. Yeah. And uh, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that see, like I love that movie. So <sighs> it's like, yeah. But and I know the book is probably like oh, ten times incredible. better. Yeah, it's incredible. So. 
So, so we're your talking wife, about the book. You come wife, home. She's right. like, let's fucking do it. You're good. You got the green light. Yeah. And you go back to Grant. So I go to Grant and I slowly over a couple of minutes, I'm like, listen, we're going to go forward with this a little bit. Uh, you know, we need to get together with your parents. So he's like, well, let me call them. Uh, I think they might be home right now. So he calls them. We set up a time to go up there. And so we go up and um, as soon as I walk in the door, they're like, where's Jenny? I'm like, she's home. Yeah. And they're like, what's up? I go, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> and they're like, what? I said, be careful what you wish for. And they're like, what are you talking about? I said, you know, and I had, I had told Grant, you know, bring copies of what you have already for your parents. And sure. he did. And I said, did you guys read this? And he, they said, no. And I said, okay, so read right now. Yeah. Or I'm walking out the door. So they sat down and they read. Damn. And when they were done, they both had lumps in their throats and I said and we're going to do this and I said you have to we have to talk about money we have to un, you know I said I pretty much think I've cleared all the mil, all the um, legal hurdles I'm, I've done the research what I did was I grabbed the paperwork that I, I had when I transferred over to the from the to the air marshals because mm-hmm. I had to basically whatever the secret service wanted me to sign at the time I had to sign so I read through it and all it was was about um Classified information. Yeah, which it was nothing about not in, in your book. So right, right, and it was nothing about um, um, confidentiality or anything, oh, wow. or or freedom of speech or whatever. So and you said that the the transition from the Secret Service to the U.S. Marshals, well, Air Marshals, uh, Air Marshals, sorry, yeah. um, oh, that's all right. was kind of like basically the same. And you just at twelve o'clock, or, or right? It's it was just a switch. transfer. Yeah, that so, was it. so the same kind of documentation. Yeah. So once you're inside was, the government, it's a huge job good. mark. Yeah. And I don't say that lightly. Um, listen, I, I got lucky. I, I still say that the day the Secret Service said I passed that test, like the machine broke. Yeah. But, hey, but, what? but what, yeah, no, I, yeah. I did. Yeah. It was no. really funny. But uh, so anyway, um, the, um, so we started going forward and we went full speed. We didn't tell anybody. I, this was one of the caveats. Oh, shit. You cannot tell anybody. You guys have to keep this quiet because if it gets out, I said, here's the thing. I'm not telling anybody. I'm not telling anybody in my family. Jenny knows. I'm not telling my kids for now. Yeah. And we didn't for almost four months until we started working at my house. And they're like, why is Grant coming over yeah. every day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they start asking you know, questions and being kids. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay. And I sat them down. And I go, look, this is, you know, there's certain things we don't talk about outside this house. Sure. You know, some of the stuff they teach you about firearms is not for other people. Yeah. Some, our money is not for other people, you know that old guy in the basement we don't talk yeah about, you know the time your time your goldfish died yeah we don't talk about yeah, that, that. But, you know yeah. so but anyway and i said this is one of those you guys get that and I'm like, sure. yeah, we understand that i'm like okay good you know so um and we talked to them about it we we, we said hey you know you get a say in this to a certain extent and and um that's and cool at, at that age they didn't really sure you know, they were they went along with it um <clears throat> later on um there were, there were times I figured out my kids, in an inadvertent way, I figured out my kids really understood what it was I did as an air marshal and, and in the Secret Service, especially the air marshal. And I found that in a really shitty way. Like, like a parents of other kids came to me and said, hey, you need to talk to your kid. Oh, really? Yeah. He is beside himself about this latest terrorist incident. Oh, shit. You know, and, and so anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, we, we can touch on that later. Yeah, yeah. So, so Jenny... Um, or, you know, so anyway, so I said, you know, we're on board. Start, you know, getting your ducks in a row and we have to start talking about it. So what we decided was, and I wish we had gone a different route with this, but as far as legal counsel, legal help, lawyers, um, Dick already had a large Philadelphia law firm called um, White and Williams who, you know, he protected him from lawsuits and, and he used for, um, you know, for his business structure and sure. stuff. So anyway, and this guy, like everybody these, that my friends know, they end up being their friends. I mean, the guy that, that cleans their friggin' giant hot tub, yeah. you know, uses it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, they're just good they're people. They're just nice people, yeah. they are. Yeah. And so anyway, um, so we started going forward and we started hammering it out. We started making phone calls. His Grant's mom, you know, she runs the medical side of the business. She runs Dick's offices and all that. But she she's very good at what she does and she said... She called me up one day. She said, I'm opening up another side of, what's that, 
software you use for running a business with your taxes and whatever. Like, with like Tax Act or something? <laughs> and do it or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. you run your business from it. Sure, sure. She goes and, and she goes, I'm going to be the unofficial business manager. I'm like, who are you to give yourself a title? Yeah, right? I want a title. Yeah. I'm like chief <laughs> storyteller or yeah. something, you know. She, and she goes, this all revolves around you. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, well, thanks for the, you You're know, like, no, right, pre- no pressure. You yeah. Know? So, um, so we went forward, but I kept telling them, I have the get out of jail card. If I decide for whatever reason, this is over. Nobody questions. Yeah. It. Squish done. It's done. Yeah. So we go into the, the lawyer's office. We start signing documents. We decide that the, 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 the LLC is myself, Grant and his father. And we each have equal, nothing can be done unless all three of us agree. Sure. With the exception, the caveat, to pull the plug on this, I get to full do that. Full control, yeah. Right. So, um, and I have full control of the story. And so anyway, um, so we go forward and we start hammering it out. And the other thing was, I didn't want to tell anybody, I mentioned this before, I wanted everybody that I ever worked with in the air marshals, in the secret service, anybody I knew to have real deniability. Not yeah. like, well, I really didn't understand what he was doing. Sure. I had no idea. That, I wanted them to be able to say, I had no idea that son of a bitch did it. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Because I really did see them taking me apart, taking my pension, and trying to prosecute me. I did. Yeah. You had to think like that. Like You do. You have worst, to. Produ- the worst thing that can happen. So that's how I've lived yeah. my whole life. I've learned it even before I joined the Air Force in the early 80s. I learned it as a kid from my dad and from other people. Always hope for the best. Prepare for the worst, and whatever comes in between, Good. that's where the reality is, yeah. right? Yeah. But be ready to do whatever in an instant. And, sure. And 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 I one of the reasons I've survived is because of that mentality. Because I will tell you that I learned by the time I got out of the Air Force, I learned about the way I carry myself tells people that you can one either trust me or two don't cross me. Yeah. And I saw because I saw it in other people. I worked with people. In the Air Force, that were like, I'm like, oh my God, I work with this guy and I'm terrified that we're being the same. Yeah. You know, his guy is like a thug, but he's yeah. a good thug. Yeah. And, but anyway, so we went forward and we, we got a, an agent, like I said, Javelin over in uh, Northern Virginia. Uh, and within a four, four or five weeks, they had five different publishers kind of interested in it. Damn. And um, the only one that was giving us, offering money up front was Hachette. Um, they're a huge, they're basically a French company, but they actually, um, they bought, Hachette bought Time Warner books years ago. So Damn. they bought up a big hunk so of, they had their of own an American. Catalog, right, yeah. exactly. And, and in the United States, that's yeah. how they got their footprint in here. Sure. So, um, so anyway, um, it took me like a whole month to figure out how to say their name, Hachette. Yeah. As opposed to Hatchet. And, <laughs> yeah, Hatchet. And, and yeah. when you say it wrong in front of one of them. Yeah. They snobbingly rip you apart. Yeah, I'm sure they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. We're it's, about to cut you a it's check very, and you don't even have to fucking say your name. Fr- yeah. Yes! <laughs> so, it's very funny. So, anyway. Um, so, we went forward. We got a contract. And like I said, we read it. We were very careful about it. Sure. But we, we kind of didn't really... We didn't pay attention to the word count. We weren't, we weren't counting. And, and you know, the, 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 uh, we, we ended up using two different... We started out with a Microsoft Word tool... To write it, and then we, eventually, once we got the contract, they said, "Hey, what are you writing it in? Can you switch it?" And we did. Yeah. And they all count the words when you you know there's a way to count, but sure. we just we just didn't. Yeah. And um, so we had to cut the book in half. Damn. So I can't remember his name right now, but we had to hire. Have you ever heard of a book doctor? No. Right. Well, that's a thing. It's a thing. That's it's crazy. a lucrative thing. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, so. Um, we, I go to we go to Javelin and we go look I don't even know what a book doctor is and they're like we got a guy he's not cheap and um, so my friend Dick Schmidt who was kind of our fan, financier he's like no problem yeah whatever we're here now you know do it yeah so we get this guy on the phone we talk he's a history he writes history books he writes he writes you know true history books he also writes historical fiction oh cool and he's also like the guy like like he's people who write history books come to this guy oh wow yeah so anyway I think we ended up paying him I want to say like maybe somewhere between 18 and 24 thousand dollars god damn yeah based on what he gave us it was nothing wow 
So Grant is a, is a, is good, a good. You mean he? What he gave you was way more than what you thought you were gonna. He cut that book in half. He took a hundred and fifty-seven thousand words, I think it was. Yeah, and made it eighty thousand. He made it eighty thousand words in less than a month. Jesus Christ! And he took what Grant. I'm from Delaware County, Pennsylvania. That's like saying you're from. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think of a place in Maryland. You know what's they always joke about? What's the area right outside the airport? On BWI? Yeah, what's that area? I mean, shit. There's... The, everybody always do. Even the, my, my friend that used to be from there used to joke about it. I'm from, what's that town? Is that a county? Yeah. I mean, there's the Har- county? Howard County. There's Harford County. No, there's the town, Anne Arundel guess. County. Anyway, oh. so so I'm from Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Yeah. So that's like, you know, that's like the, when you're from Del, and we call it Delco. When you're from Delco, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like ghetto, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So when you say Delco, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. So I talk like I'm from Delco. I write like I'm a cop. Um, this guy took what took me 37 words to say. He could say it in 17. Wow. And you would have thought it was written by the guy that invented the language. Really? Yeah. That's fucking Even awesome. to the point where, so when we first start, he sends me, a, you know, I make it very clear to him that I'm available 24-7. Sure. And I try to get across to this guy that he needs to do it by phone. But I, I kind of gloss over the fact that the reason is because of my ADD, and my dyslexia, it takes me forty minutes to write three lines on a computer. Bro, you, you know the deal, right? So, so, and it's going to be hard to understand. And, and when I write, I write with word, uh, speech to text, and 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 you know some stuff I get really good, and some I don't. Sure. But I use speech to text, and so anyway. Um. So the first time he sends me this message, it's like two paragraphs long. He's trying to clarify something. And so I message him back. I go, look, clearly you haven't gotten far enough in the manuscript where I talk about my ADD and dyslexia. Yeah. I don't word process type very well. Yeah. Could you please call me? So he calls me right away and he's laughing and he goes, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, listen, I know you don't want to waste time talking to me on the phone and I won't. You just, when that phone rings, I will pick it up. Yeah. I will say, hello. You tell me what you need to know. I will tell you. Dumb. You hang up. Yeah. When you have, need what you know, you're not hurting my feelings. Yeah. And I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning because it's not that we're paying you to do this. If this isn't done in that time frame, I'm going to lose this contract. And I owe somebody $50,000. Yeah. Yeah. No. So yeah. he's like, no, no. He, and this guy knows what he's doing. He's a writer's writer. And yeah. So we hammer it out. But so he sends us back like the first three chapters to read. And I am like just stunned. You're blown away. Right. But yeah. I'm looking at it. And so I send him a message. Uh, on the email I go when appropriate for you when you have two minutes to talk on the phone when there's nothing else you need to do please it's not that big of a deal but I just need to relay something to you sure so a little while later he he calls me so I read back to him what he wrote and he goes that sounds fine I said it does it sounds great it sounds like an English teacher wrote it (laughs) he goes oh shit I'm like no, no, I'm not telling you you have to you you know it doesn't have to sound like you're from Delco. He goes, What's Delco? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. What? I go, it doesn't have to sound like a dumbass cop wrote it, but but you know, just I'm just telling you to you be careful with some of the words you might use to write your stuff. You would I would never not even, talk that way. Yeah, exactly. I said I had to look up this this word. That I knew what sense. it meant. Yeah. But I wasn't I I wasn't sure if there were multiple uses for it. Sure. And and um well, you so just wanted anyway. to be authentic. Right. No, I do. That's and all. So when he was done, it was magic. And um, even to the point where when he was done, we paid him and we had fulfilled our contract. Um, Two months after the book came out, we turned around and wrote him another check. Damn. For, you know, not a huge amount, but But just be like, thanks. Because. Side note, were you talking about Dundalk, Maryland? No. Because that's like the armpit of America. So not that... I know Delco you're is, right, you're right, but it was but Jesus it Christ. With the I B, hope it's not. It's up by the airport, the, the town. The, Bowie? No. But, Beltsville? But, no, it's not Beltsville. That's where the training center is. But, but, uh, not Bellevue. Bel Air? No. Anyway, it'll come to me. <laughs> so, um, uh, it's gonna. I know it's gonna kill me. Whatever. We'll fucking. Yeah, I'll put so, it in the comments or six. Yeah. Or so anyway, um, that's cool though that that you. Right, like wanted to be that authentic that you paid this yeah. guy all this money instead of being like, no, dude, write it like that so we sound smart as fuck. You're like, no, like, no, let's no, just it's, yeah, it's gotta be right. And, I love and, that. Right, and um, one day he messages me and he goes, "Listen, I'm embarrassed to tell you this, but I don't really know much about guns." 
and you're describing this firearm. And I go, yeah. And he goes, I don't understand. Yeah. And I said, well, it's a shotgun. It's a Remington. Mm-hmm. I said, you know Remington? He goes, yeah. I said, it's an 870. He goes, do they sell a lot of them? I said, they sell 10 million. That's like the number one. Yeah, 10 yeah. million of them. He yeah. goes, what? I said, yeah. They started making it in 1950. They've sold mm-hmm. over 10 million. I said, today it's made in like over 400,000 different configurations. Yeah. He goes, you're kidding me. I'm like, no. He goes, okay. The only thing I know about shotguns is, you know, I used to hunt with an old bird gun with my dad. And I'm like, I go, well, bird gun, that was probably a, a, an Ithaca or, or a, a Savage. He goes, it was. Yeah. It was a and Savage. Like, Mine's blown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, but... Um, so uh, he got it all done. He got it done in time. And, you know, so we send it back to the publisher and they're like, we're good. Really? We, it's perfect. You didn't have any like back and forth? Well, not until the lawyers reviewed it. Oh, shit. All that right. was a nightmare. Okay. Yeah. So they're lawyers. So one of the stories I tell in there, this is the first story the lawyers come back with. When I was in the Air Force from 82 to 86, this is before... In today's military, you can be um, gay and um, I don't even know what the word is anymore. It's not out, it, whatever. You can be a, if you're gay and you are out. Yeah, but what is it called now? Not closeted or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, 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 yeah, you're openly gay. Right. Thank you. Sure. So before that was Don't Ask, Don't Tell, brought to us by Bill Clinton, mm-hmm. um, which connects to a couple stories before that the military especially the air force if they even thought you there was a chance you could be homosexual they pursued you it was it was heartbreaking really so, yes uh and i love the military but i would tell you and i i understood the mentality but when i met my roommate and i and then later on and i realized that was his lifestyle I, it changed my whole perception of everything. Perception, yeah. my behavior—not so much my behavior. I was, you know, live and let live. I, I grew up with that pretty much, but m- my take on it in the military, and and I found out by accident. My roommate was from up north, um, northeast. Um, he had a motorcycle. I had a car, a Chevy Chevette. Yeah, we lived on base together in a room. Um, I had no idea about his lifestyle by any of his behavior. Sure. One time we were going to a concert. My roommate had borrowed my car. I had his motorcycle, but it was cold. It was like, you know, Newport News, Virginia winter. So it was 40 yeah. degrees. My dad was in the Navy, so I'm, okay. I know all about Newport yeah, News. Okay, well, then this, this is going to I'm going to I'm I'm so. Well, I'm going to connect right there. Cool. So we're over in Norfolk at a concert. We're yeah. on our way home, and three of us, you know, uh, we're, we're full of beer. Yeah. So we have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So we get off the Interstate 64. Sure. We end up, I think we're in Ocean View or Norfolk, somewhere right there. I think it's Ocean View. There used to be a bar called the Bearded, Bearded Clam. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? Right? That sounds Do you like, know what that is? I don't know what that is. you know is. what a Bearded Clam is? No. Think of a vagina. <laughs> Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. So yeah, yeah. it used to be like a knuckle breaking what? Yeah, navy ga- navy bar. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, it became a gay bar, what? but it kept the same name. That's so funny. So we pull over. They go, "Hey, we'll go in the bearded clam." We pull in, and as I'm getting out of my buddy's Mustang, I look over and I go, "God, that car looks just like mine." Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we go inside. We walk right in. We don't, you know. So we go right in. The, you know, rush right in past the door. And at this time, it's a gay bar. It's a gay bar. Okay, at this time. So we go in, we go to the bathroom, and we're, you know, we're standing there and look around, and it's just a trough, you know, peeing in a big trough. Sure. And everybody's dressed up. I'm like, oh, it must be like village people now. Yeah, or yeah, something, yeah. You know? And it, it still doesn't click, you know. I wash my hands, I come out, and it's all guys, and it's guys just like, I'm like, God, that's the ugliest woman. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's a guy just like a woman. <laughs> so I look around, I go, and we stop, and, and all of a sudden the doorman walks over and he goes, hey, dumbass, it's, we're a gay bar. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. He goes, no, no. What are you doing? Yeah, what are like, you well, doing? We just came to pee. He's like, okay, no yeah, problem. Yeah. I said, do you want us to buy a beer? He's like, no, I want you to leave. Yeah. <laughs> because you're making these guys uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah, of yeah. course. And Especially I'm like, back okay. then too. That's like late eighties, right? It's uh, eighty or mid eighties. Three. So or, yeah, eighty-four. So it's eighty-four. 80s. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. So as we're walking by, all of a sudden this arm sticks out. Like there's this group of seven people standing right in front of the bar, uh-huh. and his arm sticks out. And goes, hey, what are you doing here? I look at the tin. Wow. I'm like, hey, dude, what's up? Hey, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, what are you doing here? I go, uh, 
Peeing. I said, what are you? Uh, I just had to go. The, the concert's over. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, you, there couldn't Play be more off. awkward. If, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it couldn't be more awkward. So I'm like, all right, we'll see you later. He said, all right. So, we, so uh, you know, I don't know. A couple of days goes by. The weekend's over. I go back to the base, and, and um, I get to our room, and I, and I go in, and he's not there, but there's a note on, on the board. Hey, we need to talk. Oh, wow. So I look at the roster. He's a security police, too. Mm-hmm. I look at the roster, and, and I see where, you know, I call over there. I'm like, hey, where's so-and-so? You know, so I, I drive over to – he's on a, a – I can drive right up where he's posted. And talk to him. Yeah. 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 And uh, he walks over to the edge. He says, hey, um, I'm like, listen. Say no more. Right. Yeah. I said, listen. That's basically what I said. I said, listen, you have nothing to explain to me. You are my friend. I – I didn't say I love you, but I wanted to. Yeah, of course. But I, I was uncomfortable. I was like, yeah. You're my buddy. Yeah. I, I think you're one of the best people I've ever met in my yeah. life. Live live on. You know, yeah. and he's yeah, like, do oh, thing, okay, man. you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, no. That's awesome. All good. So um, That's cool as shit. And then later on, like, when he found out I was trying to move off base, he goes to the, and he had been in the Air Force a while. Sure. He goes to the first sergeant, and he goes, hey, Bernie wants to move off base. And um, he's like, why? You went to your own room? He goes, no, I love Bernie, but. He wants to move off base. He's got friends he went to high school with yeah, down yeah. here in Newport News. Yeah. He wants to move over there with them. And the, the, the first sergeant's like, well, we have to hit 75% occupancy. And, and my buddy's like, really? Yeah. He's like, all right. Have yeah. out the so he kind of like helped you out. Yeah. That's and, cool. and, and only because he's a good guy. Yeah. You know? And we still like, even though I moved off base, if he needed a car, he'd call me up. He'd say, hey, I need, need your car. I want to go home. I'm like, all right, yeah. I'll take the motorcycle. Yeah. So I, That's cool, though, yeah. because I, especially back then, that mentality was not a common thing. So to all the, the, the long story leads to back to this. So the lawyers are afraid. Oh. I tell that story in the book, but I you know, no names. I don't even tell you what part of the world we're in. Sure. I don't even think you can figure out we're on the East Coast of the United States. Yeah. They're worried I'm outing him. What? I'm like, I don't even mention his name. Yeah, no. I said, I can't even remember his last name. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That they would... Well, I mean, I guess they're lawyers, so they have to kind of do that. Yeah, shit. but I'm like, you know, that was f- almost forty years ago. Yeah, he's he's, he's probably out. yeah he's probably living with his th- husband of thirty years. Yeah. They probably have ten kids yeah, or exactly. whatever. Yeah, and um, but I always just he was just so so so, they, so that was one that was the first thing. And that then, was the first thing they put right. In the and ringer. then the other thing was I had to I had to sign an affidavit and fax it back to them and then do it on a recording that. To the best of my knowledge, I never signed a confidentiality agreement. In the Secret Service? In the Secret Service. What? So, first they tried to say, I've never, ever signed one. I said, I'm not I'm not stating that. Yeah. I am saying that I have never signed one for the U.S. Secret Service. Yeah. And they're like, well, we are uncomfortable with the way you're twisting that. I'm like, I'm not twisting it. No, that's what, you I, are. That's what it was. You yeah. want me to give you a blanket statement? I'm not. Yeah. I said, don't forget, you're talking to the guy that had to testify against the President of the United States. Yeah, like, I understand a little bit about language yeah, and the law. You've been grilled a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I took a crash course that almost killed 24 of us. Yeah, you know? that's insane. So, yeah. So, uh, so when you so when they okayed the book and, the, and you got through the lawyer's process, I mean, did the Secret Service take your pension? Were they, you no, said they were, nothing happened. What? Yeah, we never told anybody. I mean, you know, they, I got called a liar. Mainstream media dropped all of my interviews. For the most part, Fox had me on. I saw you on a couple spots, yeah. Yeah, Fox did, treated me real well. Sean Hannity. Yeah, Hannity. Sean yeah. Hannity and uh, Steve Bannon from M- XM Satellite yeah. locked on to me like a... Wait, Bannon? Bannon Bannon? Yeah, Steve Trump Bannon. Bannon. Yeah, he was he's, he was the... Uh, let's see, uh, Breitbart was started by... Uh, Breitbart, Breitbart yeah. right? Yeah. And Steve Bannon was his partner. Mm-hmm. And um, so... Um, to tell their stories, I can tell him and Sean Hannity stories. They're kind of similar. When I meet them both early that morning, mm-hmm. they both have a copy of my book they got in the day before. They sure. read it nonstop. Yeah. It was dog-eared. There were yeah. stickums on yeah, it. Yeah, they're good it was, at that. That's their job. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. You know. And, they and, know every question. Yeah. And they, oh, yeah. And um, and Hannity, the first thing he says, he grabs my hand. He shakes my hand with both hands. He goes, what are you doing to protect yourself? Like he's afraid to say. No, yeah. And I started laughing, and I'm like, dude, what are they? You know, what, you know, what are they gonna do? Yeah. I, I said, you know, it's. Listen, when they read this, Sean, and I believe they have. They it, definitely by, have. Yeah, I said they. By the time they read this and they were done reading it, they were relieved, because I was not trying to. I wasn't trying to start any new controversy. Sure. There were things I wasn't going to talk about. 
because one of them was and eventually I do talk about it now but then I thought it might actually get me killed uh, by the Chinese but it turns out that it was already out and I didn't realize it oh really yes was and it confidential you ever? know who knew about it no okay you know who knew about it who's the crazy I know who he is but I'm gonna who's the crazy conspiratorial guy that oh Alex Jones had every he called it detail of what happened what and I swear God is my witness I'm not his source there were only five other people in the world that could have known. Wow. Bill I, Clinton was one of them. I love Alex Jones. He's like, he's nuts, but he's like on point with some shit. No, I, I love him. And he's a nice guy. He interviewed me at least three times on Skype. Yeah. And whenever he started to go off the deep off the, well, yeah, go, <laughs> go to the grassy knoll, as I call it. Yeah. Um, and I would, I would, I wouldn't be rude. I would, I would just let him go. And then when he saw I was uncomfortable, he yeah. would go right back over, yeah. and we'd focus right back. I really respect the guy. And, yeah. and, and listen, he's a gem. I like people who push the, for the freedom of speech. I yeah. do. Yeah, he I, pushes it for sure. He does. <laughs> and um, so because I didn't really understand what f- a lot of our constitutional freedoms were until I retired, I didn't really understand because I didn't have freedom of yeah. speech. No, we well, didn't. You didn't have to exercise a lot of that stuff no, until and, you and, run and into the you shit. Had to, you had to keep your opinions to yourself about a lot of things. Of course, yeah. You, you can't know. be like, yeah. So, so uh, I'm a fan of Alex's. I, I don't routinely watch him, but I do go and watch some of the stuff. Well, he's off the air now. They took. Him well, off he's but he's still he's coming can, back. He's yeah, still doing can, his thing. He yeah. was on Rogan a couple months ago. Yeah, you can find hours. him. Yeah, I watched can, the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, if if your audience is going to watch any video that is kind of telltale who I am, I interview with um, Opie and whatever he, his partner is now. Um, Wait, Opie like Ron Howard? No, <laughs> no. It's a it's a it's a satellite radio show. It used to be Opie and Andy. Oh, okay, now yeah, it's yeah. Opie yeah. and yeah, yeah. I know Sean about yeah, 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 yeah. So they're interviewing me, and um, I, I, I at the at the time I don't understand the difference between satellite and regular broadcast yeah. and this. We can say pretty much whatever. We can do we want. whatever we want. With this. If you don't like it, you can edit it. Yes. That's your thing, and yeah. so, um, so anyway. Um, we're talking, and and, and um, they they said, "What do you say to people who say you shouldn't have done it?" And this is one of the questions. The way I was they said ask it, you that anyway, so yeah, I get choked up when yeah. people ask because I, I, there is a part of me, I, there is a part of me that would tell you forever that part of what I did it, it's partially wrong. Uh, I mean, I didn't have a confidentiality agreement. You don't the oath that you take is to the Constitution of our Republic, not the President. And the office, not the man. Sure. But do I feel I crossed the threshold? I, I did. I, I, I use an analogy that's it's a little severe, but, you know, if you're a Secret Service agent or officer and you were on a detail and the president was at a shooting range and he accidentally fires a rifle into the air, the analogy I used was he's at Camp David, he's handling a high-powered rifle, he accidentally shoots it off into the air. The next day you're home and you look on the news, a kid in the next town was out front and got hit in the head and mm-hmm. died. And his parents don't know why. And you know what happened. What is your, what is the, and, and this guy is 18 months away from getting reelected. What do you do? Yeah. Do you do what your conscience? That's a, yeah, that's like. No. Yeah, yeah right. So, so this possible, is, the, this is what I thought. I know that's a little severe, but this is the mentality I was thinking, yeah. using. And, and I'm like, who's going to tell the truth? Yeah. And is it wrong? It is. But I'm not breaking any laws. I am going to get hammered. And like I said, I, I was convinced I was going to, you know. Get killed. Not killed, but um, I thought I was going to end up getting roughed up. I, uh, I wasn't so concerned about myself as I was a little concerned about my family. Okay. And I also knew it was going to be exposing my kids to maybe some ridicule because we live around people that don't think like we do. Yeah. They're not, you know, they're good people, don't get me wrong, but they're they're from the other side of the tracks. They're liberals or mm-hmm. whatever. They're my neighbors. They're good people. Um my next door neighbor that I lived next to for 13 years is this far left wing. And she was in tears in the driveway telling me she could not read the book because she didn't want to know the truth. Wow. Because I had been her neighbor and she had such respect for she me. She just knows you in a different way. Yeah. She knows me who I really am. Yeah. And she knows everything out of my mouth is true. Yeah. And, um, she, didn't want to and, have her and she didn't want to know the truth. Yeah. And, and, and I think, see, I, I won't say this to her, but I think that's insanity. Yeah. I think that's complete yeah, mental the blinders illness. on. You yeah, just... I think that's you know it's like, yeah, it's it's uh, it's just crazy. So, you want to talk about the Clinton 
kill this real quick. <laughs> so here's why I put a little stock into it. Yeah. True story. No, well, they're all true. But so it's early 90s. Nobody comes into the White House. And you, I know you know and have talked to other people that worked at the White House, mm-hmm. agents and stuff. Nobody comes in or goes out without it being recorded. Nobody. Yeah. The first family, it's either recorded because the Secret Service is doing the movement. If you became president of the United States, <laughs> you're... F- <laughs> I love when people... I love that reaction. Yeah. Your best friend, that nurse we were talking about, mm-hmm. You, the, you trust them with your life, literally. We do not. Oh shit. We do not. Yeah. And we don't, don't give a crap anywhere. what you think. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to say that to your face. We're going to be nice. Mm-hmm. We have procedures set up. They're going to go through a metal detector. They're not going to see it. We're going to politely screen their stuff. Oh, cool. We're going to walk a dog by them. We're going to do whatever we have to at first until we know who they are. Now, the the day that you win the election, the next day, or the next time you're sober enough and your family's you know what yeah. I mean? like <laughs> the secret service comes in with a photographer and you get everybody in that room that's part of your family or friends that will come and see you and we pull you aside the the head of the secret service is there at the time it might even be the director he'll pull you inside and say hey who are these people are not going to be in your inner circle sure you know let's politely you know we'll we'll put the burden on us but you know tell us who they are and they start taking pictures of the the family the, their inner circle, their fa- their extended family members, mm-hmm. and they start getting them out to what, everybody on the post. Okay. All the agents. Oh. They start, and eventually they go out to the field offices all over the world when the agents come are going to come to to work in Washington. So they know who's so, with us. Yeah. So it's familiar to you. Wow. Because a lot of times when politicians, like photographs, the poli- like they're on each post, entry post at the White House, each there's a book on there that's every member of Congress. Damn. The problem with it is is that the photographs are from 19... 19- 70. Yeah. And these it's guys are like first, 90 years yeah, old. Yeah. Ted Kennedy's picture, like he's dead now, but yeah. when I remember looking at Ted Kennedy's picture, I'm like, I think he was still in the army during yeah, the Korean that's War. Like, that's, that's ridiculous. He yeah. doesn't look Let's Kennedy. update this. Yeah. I mean, a Kennedy, all they all look the same sort of, but, yeah, yeah. but like some of the other ones, like, you know, I'm like, they're bald now. This yeah. picture they, looks like they have a hair helmet that's on. That's insane. Yeah. So anyway, so the Secret Service takes pictures of these the families right away mm-hmm. and they get them out to everybody and they put names on them. You know, they yeah. blow them up big and they put the names on top of them. You know, I can remember the Bushes, you know, uh, the president, the first lady, Barbara. Their, their call signs, you know, we the call signs that we used oh, wow. will be on there. And sure. then their names, you know, Jeb, uh, was it George, Jeb, Neil, Marvin, and Doro, Dorothy, Doro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then their call signs. Yeah. What so, are call signs? So that we use over the radio. So oh. they're not classified. Uh, they probably were originally, but they end up in the paper. You could Google them. Yeah. So what's the president called? Like, uh, what's his name? So I'm not sure about uh, President the, Trump. The eagle has landed or some eagle shit. Eagle was uh, Clinton's. Yeah. So so each family gets a letter. The Clintons were E's. They were Eagle, Evergreen, and Energy. Wow. Eagle, Bill, Hillary, en- uh, Evergreen, um, Energy, Energy. Was, uh, Chelsea. Yeah. The Papa Bush was Timberwolf. They were T's. Timberwolf. Yeah. Mrs. The grandmother, Barbara Bush. Tranquility, which was perfect, and then they were, they're different. You know, I don't remember them all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was George W? Jesus, I can't remember. <laughs> so, party, party. But board, anyway, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, uh, quick, quick uh, side story. So George W. Bush had two daughters who, it, while he was president, they were Jenna and Barbara. They were teenagers. Yeah. And they had a habit of um, getting caught underage in bars. So jokingly, inside the Secret Service, not publicly, only joking amongst ourselves, yeah. we started calling them gin and tonic. <laughs> so That's pretty clever, actually. We would never, you know, no. I mean, it's public now because I'm saying it. Yeah. And hey, I've George. Said it before. Yeah, you're not going to be like No, you would never. You no, no, no. And they were such nice people. But yeah. anyway, it's a joke. You know, yeah, yeah. We, there's a lot of boredom. Uh, that's so funny. Yeah, and, and that's how we, that's one of the ways we. Entertain so, yourself. So the kill list. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's the early, uh, it's like 90. Three. Yeah. It's in the summer. Um, nobody comes in and goes out without an acknowledgement. Um, I'm working outside the Oval Office. My buddy calls me. He's working the ground floor post. So there's going to be the, the Clintons have guests coming in. They're going to be their car is going to be swept by a canine before they come in the gate. When they and um, it's going to be swept by a canine. When they get up, we're going to get their we're going to get their IDs there, and then we're going to um, uh, check their IDs and then let them in. 
and supposedly their names are already in the visiting computer. Uh, there's a Secret Service has a system. It was called Waves. It's a, it was some acronym. Mm-hmm. It's basically everybody that comes in for an appointment to see the first yeah. family. Is in the business system. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, the, their information is already supposed to be in there. So they everybody gets a phone call and says, "Do not check these guys' IDs when they show up at the gate. Um, somebody will come down and identify them." You know, the usher. And we're like, the usher? How's the usher know them? These are, we've already been told they're friends of the Clintons from Arkansas. Sure. How would he know them? So. Who's not from Arkansas. Right. So they, right, he's not. So, uh, Arbutus. That's the name. The That's town where my Maryland. mom's from. Yeah, Arbutus. Arbutus. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, <laughs> don't tell, don't was, let your mother. I was going to say Arbutus, up. but then it's Arbutus. I was like. They used to joke about it. I'm like, you're from Ar- my neighbor. You're yeah. from Arbutus. That's so I know. funny. Yeah. Yeah, my grandma like, grew up. That's where my mom yeah. grew up. <laughs> I can't wait to oh tell my god, yeah. it's wrong. That's insane. Don't tell her I no, said she's it. gonna fucking she's gonna know now. Up, yeah, man. yeah, right. So um, the last thing you gotta worry about. Yeah. So <laughs> she, um, what was I talking about? The the, per, the usher. Yeah. Okay. So so that my buddy calls me and goes, what do I do? He's telling me not to record them in the in the logbook because when they come through that door from the south grounds, you sp- they're that's you're, you're protocol. To record, right. Sure. It's the process, and you know that's a it's a congressionally mandated law. You oh know? damn. Yeah, right. it's a big deal. It's national security implications. And sure. So anyway, so he calls me up. He goes, what do I do? I said, here's what I would do. When they come in, I would look at them, take a description of them, and write it down in the book. Yeah. That's he goes, ah, oh, man, I might be pushing the... I'm like, dude, you don't want to have to explain to a congressional subcommittee of why whatever happened. You know, we don't know who these people are. Yeah. So they did K-9, and the vehicle, it passed. And when the car pulls up, what do you think these guys looked like? Oh, uh, they're here to visit the Clintons. Where they? And this is connected. This is how I. This is how I make the connection that when people talk about the kill list or the fact that the Hillary Clinton had a group of people that used to harass and 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 um, and threaten people. This is what I'm talking about. Well, they, is, now, now these guys show up. What do you think they look like? Big burly, like. In a fucking all black, it looked like a scene from like Casino. A kill team. It looked like oh, a seal from a scene from Casino. It's like a bunch of mafia Slacks guys. Slacks on, white open collar shirts, jackets on, blue what? and black. Jackets. Yes, that's who they were. Wow. I mean, you couldn't listen. They're mob guys. They they were they, yes. Wow. The, or you know Arkansas mob. The, the, yeah. Sure. Sure. They, or they, were they really even from Arkansas? Tall like, guy. Yeah. No, they were. Oh really? Yeah. The car had Arkansas plates on it. Wow. Somebody ran it later on. Um, they um, what the fuck? So they drove all the way up from Arkansas. They didn't fly in. Mm. That's a little no paper trail. That's a little weird. So yeah. anyway, they're there for like a couple hours and then they leave. So that based that and the other stuff I I've, I've heard about and seen over the years. I mean, do I really believe that they're having people killed? I mean, how do you explain? You know, the the one that that I never paid much attention to it until. Um, the Secretary of Commerce, Ron Brown, died in that suspicious plane crash. How is it everything that happens to somebody they know ends up being a scandal? Yeah. Finn's Foster can't even kill himself and it ends up being a scandal. I mean, and, you know, I'll, I'll, let me say this because the first thing you, people usually say is, did he really kill himself? He did. He was severely depressed. I, I Do I blame the Clintons a little bit? I do. Sure. They knew this guy from Arkansas. They actually visited him years ago when he was – being hospitalized for his depression. They knew how severe it was. And sh- they begged him to come up and help Hillary Clinton try to put out these fires. Because of one of the reasons I wrote the book, she's so incompetent, everything she touched turns to shit. She could screw up a church picnic. I'm <laughs> telling you. You know, she 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 literally, you know, she she tried to do the healthcare thing. She screws that up. She They try to do it secretly. The word gets out that they're literally using the healthcare system that... that um, not Joe Stalin. What was the guy's name? Yeah, Joe Stalin was going to implement in in, in uh, not Joe Stalin. Who was the guy that was the the communist in Poland? Anyway, like the the doctrine they were working off of was actually communist From doctrine that. for for healthcare. Wow. So and that leaked out. And so anyway, um, so she just everything she touches turns to shit. Yeah. So they bring Vince Foster up and. And eventually he snaps under the pressure. 
Wow. Now, I don't believe he killed himself where they found them, but I do believe he killed himself. See, so. Now, the, the only reason why I, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons why I put a lot of stock into it is because, and I have no experience in military and government or anything, but, and I'm only, you know, from people I talk to and things that I see on, on TV and stuff, is like the fact that, I forget what his name was, but there was a reporter recently in the past, I think in like 2016, uh, his Mercedes, he was driving his Mercedes and he was actually about to release some information or something that he had on the Clintons and literally he, he got into a car accident and they said that his car was at like 110 miles an hour and he hit a tree and it exploded then I watched an episode of Joe Rogan and there's a former CIA agent CIA CIA agent talking about um, Rogan's like straight up he's like would the government have the capabilities of you know, taking your car, and he's like, "Yeah, if your car has a computer in it, they could easily hack it and do whatever they want to it." But then, what got me was the whole Epstein thing. Of this man, you know, there's there's an, a log of President Bill Clinton being on his private plane twenty four, twenty six, twenty six different times at least. I, I have friends that I've known for over twenty years. I've never flown with them one time. Right? That like doesn't make sense to me. And then the day after he acknowledges Epstein in prison, um, that he's gonna talk and he's gonna fucking sing. He he hangs himself, and then just recently the autopsy came out and was not. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that shit. I don't know. No, no. I, it, it it draws suspicion, absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. Even something as personal and disastrous as suicide. Anybody that's connected with the Clintons, as soon as Ron Brown dies, he's the Secretary of Commerce. The rumor around D.C. was that he was cooperating with the. FBI in an investigation in the Clintons that he was spilling the beans. Damn. He's Bill Clinton's Secretary of Commerce, I think it was. He's this nice guy. He, he died? On a military plane, flying over a range of mountains in Europe or somewhere that's hard to get to. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you couldn't have planned it any better. Yeah. Like, what's the chances that that's a coincidence? Wow. Uh, you know, that and, and, and supposedly the first rescue people on the scene says say that there was a bullet hole in the back of his head. What? So, I don't know. And, and, and when I say rescue, I mean, by the time they got there, it was, I forget the name of the mountain range and where it was over in, in Europe, Bosnia, somewhere. But it was hard to get to yeah. and it took forever. And um, it, it's suspicious. Yeah. Everything and, pretty much, they either die in a suicide or an accident. A lot of these So the car are, thing you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? I do. Okay. And, and so here's, here's what they did before. No, you're good. Here's what they did before the um, one of the ways they 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 did this they they could have done this Arkansas we used to call them the Arkansas the the one car Arkansas suicide oh, and then usually they were found the first story is they committed suicide and then when they somebody figured out that they had bullet holes in the back of their head then it was they lost control of the car so usually what would happen they wow. do this thing called a bump and run so somebody comes up behind you really fast mm -hmm. really fast one car first. And he gets up behind you, and, and he gets up behind you, flashes his lights, and he basically makes you speed up a little bit. And then he moves up to the left, and the other guy comes up behind you and starts pushing you harder and getting you to the point. And then when they get you right where they want you and they see something on the road that, that there's an obstruction like a tree or mm -hmm. whatever, then this guy pushes you over. Damn. So that's what the stories were from Arkansas back in the day. Wow. And I, I ran into a deputy sheriff one time down there years ago before Clinton actually won. I was protecting Papa Bush. And we got in the discussion about the Clintons, and he said, let me tell you something about them. The crazier it is, the truer it is, and everything you hear about them, believe it. He said, this guy said, listen, my dad grew up with his Bill Clinton's mother. Wow. We know them intimately. They, there's a reason we call them the Arkansas Mafia. Why? He goes, they, it is the crazier the story, Gary. He said, you believe it. He said, if that guy runs, he'll win. He'll be there for eight years. And he said, she'll eventually run. And it, that's exactly what happened. And that was 1991. Damn. Before he, you know, announced. That's insane. Yeah. I remember you telling a story about, we'll do one more story. Yeah, and then go we'll ahead. wrap it up. The, uh, sure. About Hillary, where, like, she didn't like the military or something, or she did, she couldn't, she made you guys, like, like no no uniformed uh, military personnel could like look her in the eye or right. something like that. Like what's up with she that? She tried to do that. Yeah. So she clearly has an, a, an issue with uniforms. And, um, you know, if you follow her like I did and, and um, studied her, and I learned a lot about her when I was doing the research for the books too mm -hmm. because I, did, I didn't just go off of my memory and, and I wanted to know like what in her life might have caused her to do that. Well, sure. I, I knew from being around her and – 
when they first got elected, her mother was still alive and she was at the White House and and Bill Clinton's mother was there at times. And I could tell by the way their mothers behaved that there was a lot of strain there. She clearly had issues. I'm no psychologist, but I'm a expert in observation. And, yeah. and you don't have to be a psychologist to see. You know, she clearly, based on the way she talks about her father and what, how little she, there was issues there. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they didn't have a good relationship. Sure. Um, or there was, you know, something weird there. But anyway, so she she definitely has a thing. Now, I I, I used to say, when, I, when the book first came out, I said on national television one time that she hates men and my PR people lost their minds. Yeah, I'm sure they did. But I will tell you, I know for a fact that she hates the military and law enforcement uniforms I've based on her behavior. Mm-hmm. What I've seen. Not what anybody else has told me. Yeah. Well, some of what some people told me because of what I've seen and these people were Secret Service people just like me. Sure. Either agents or officers. And we used to have to tell each other all this shit so you knew what was going on you passed the information on. She stood right in front of me one time when I worked outside the Oval Office Screamed and yelled at me, called me an asshole, uh, said that she should have fired the entire uniform division when they got there. And this is the same thing she told her husband. I talk, tell the story in the book where um, she goes over and screams at Bill for 40 minutes because of something happened with the uniform division. Sure. So there's agents that I worked with and there's stories out there um, where, the, you know, the, they're, she's staying over in a hotel and they're bringing in a military canine to sweep the room. And they hear she's coming back. The guy literally grabs the, the canine officer and pulls her pulls her out of the way behind the curtain with the dog. Oh my God. And she's like, get your hands off me. He goes, no, no, I'm helping you. Just bear with me. And the girl's all freaked out. And then Hilly comes by and like it's too late. And, and she flips on this female canine handle. Wow. Get that effing dog out of here, you motherfuckers. And she starts, yeah. What? Yeah, that's who she really is. That's why I wrote the book. Because that's who she really is. That woman is risking her life to do that job to protect her yeah. that agent he saw it so often that that was his reaction and what he does was that like tell paranoid you? about it yeah. and, and 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 being on her detail was a form of punishment i talk about it all the time really they used to, the secret service used to say when when they were still in office they used to tell these senior these agents when they were trying to get a transfer or they wanted something they'd say hey you know you do this for a certain amount of time well i don't really want to do that how about working on the first lady's deal? We'll put you on Evergreen's even detail, detail. How about that? You know, fuck you. <laughs> you know, because it was a form of punishment. Really? Yes. Even in the after my book came out, and the left side of the country media, you know, called me a lot, tried to call me a liar. Sure. About two months later, um, um, not Snowden. Um, What's the other guy? Well, somebody leaked something. And, yeah, and, WikiLeaks. Um, yeah, something and. And what got leaked was FBI reports of uh, when they interviewed State Department agents that were protecting Hillary. They said the same shit that I did. Wow. That they guys resigned to stop working. They retired because they couldn't take working for anymore. That's they crazy. They hated her because she treated them so shittily. Yeah, I wonder why she felt like she had that. Obviously, she's the first lady's, but still, like, I don't know. She just. Listen, the contrast. I'm very nuanced, just so you know. No, 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 that's good. Right. No, it's good. Yeah. Like I said, I I do the same thing, and like you, I want to know why. What? What? You know, I'm more of a yeah. I want to know why, and because she's damaged. Yeah. She listen. If she was born today and tested, there's something wrong with her. Really? She's soulless, and I don't say that lightly. Yeah. Because one time I tell a story about she struck an agent in the back of the head with a Bible sitting in a limousine on the south ground, and somebody said she, she had a Bible. I said when you when she has a Bible, it's a prop. Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, she is no she does not live by that book. Wow. I mean, she does not, you know, it's just a prop based on what I saw. Yeah. And and the experiences my coworkers had. So. Yeah. No, I know I saw a lot, a lot of people that that would say whether it was left, right or whoever would contest what you're saying was because yeah. oh, he's a he's a um He's a, uh, a uniformed agent. Yeah. Right? He didn't even have that right. kind of close they proximity. Did. They did. I remember, uh, right. They, so they did. And so so my answer to that was, okay, let's go with your what you said. Sure. Well, I was uh, subpoenaed six times. Yeah. Well, the, uh, a lot of people were. True? Why did I rise to the top? Well, uh, I was there. I saw it. Yeah. This is what happened. Look, you might not like it. You might be have been in the Secret Service and think that I broke a vow. And I, I sort of did. I admit that. But again, where do you draw the line? Sure. How does your conscience work? I tell you how mine works. Yeah. Elector, don't elector. Vote for, don't vote for. I don't care. This is who she really is. 
You still want to vote for it? Do, do it. That's that's our system. I love yeah. it. It's great. But that's who she really is. They're all a little different than what you see, than with the exception of maybe President Trump. They're all a little different than what you see in public. Of course. Like the Bushes, they were very nice, but they were really nice in public. What was different about them is they were probably a little bit more private than they had to be. Both sets. Yeah, yeah. They were probably, they were more public because they had to be. Yeah. They, they were very private Yeah, people. they seemed very reserved. They were. And honestly, I don't know about you, but I, I thought that uh, Cheney kind of ran that, yeah, so, ran that so, program. So, 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 so yes, to a certain extent, no. Um, and I, I know, like, the, you know they, what I mean? Like, they made a movie about him, and that was the thrust of it. Um, and I thought the movie was funny as hell. I liked it. But, um, but yes and no. And one more thing, I know we got to wrap up, but one more thing, I'll point I want to make about the um, about being the, the president, anybody that runs for president. And I'm going to start out by saying it like this: They don't have a clue what they're doing. They don't have a clue what they're getting into. George Herbert Walker Bush was vice president for eight years, and he turned to his chief of staff, the right after he became president, and said, "I had no idea what Ronnie was putting up with. I, I had no idea." Wow. You know, I mean, their day is nonstop. It's twenty. Even when they're sleeping, they're compiling the shit to tell them as soon as they wake up. Really? And then sometimes they have to wake them up. Wow. It's that just sucks. around the clock, all the time, everything, everything. I mean, I, 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 I could tell you an hour. I could talk for an hour and tell you the things, most things that I've been around when I've seen that either somebody from the um, sit room or a Secret Service agent had to go up to the president and say, um, sir, this just happened. This is urgent. This yeah. just happened. This just happened. This just happened. That just happened. This is happening. This might happen. Yeah. I mean, just, it's unbelievable. Nonstop. Yeah. Even like I said, I never, there's nothing about Bill Clinton's politics that I liked, but there were times when I knew what was going on. I was like, oh, if I didn't think I'd get thrown out or, you know, I'd hug him. God, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, yeah. Or, or, or at least shake his hand sure. and go, hey, yeah, it'll I'm be a right. Coke. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. can, let's get a beer. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's just because you, you know, and and these aren't even. I'm not even talking about the stress he was under because of his own wrongdoing. I'm just talking about the national security, the, the best, what's best for the U.S. Yeah. type stuff. It's it's unbelievable. So it that's was so it, crazy. And I was I'm so grateful to have experienced. It was great. Yeah. No, so. that's. I mean, I could only imagine it, yeah. it has to be chaotic nonstop. You yeah. Know? I mean, you is. have to deal with all of this crazy yeah, it's, shit. It's constant chaos. It's organized chaos. Um, and sometimes you shake your head and you're like, man, it's like, it's like, you know, I used to see stuff and, and like when I was in the air force, I, I kind of learned it there. Like you'd say, you think this is the first day we were in the air force? Yeah. You know, some, you'd see shit happen at the white house, say, you know, whatever, something would go wrong and you go, God damn, like this is our first day as a country or what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember my first beer. Yeah. yeah. No, well, that exactly. Was Along that mentality. Yeah. You know, like, did we just start this country yeah, yesterday? Exactly, I mean, yeah. How is it we're still doing this dumb no, shit? I yeah. see that nowadays. Yeah, That's no, I, I do too. So. so where where can, you know, your books, name your books, and where can people find you? So, on social so media? I'm Gary J. Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E, uh, on Instagram, on uh, Twitter. I'm Gary J. Byrne, author. Uh, YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. Yep. My videos are on there. Yeah, it's good. I watch uh, eventually, it. When, when you're done with this and I'll you send it to you. us, Grant will post it on Absolutely, my yeah. site. Absolutely, um, also, from on my website is official Gary J. Byrne. You can buy my books through the website. Mm -hmm. You can also still get them on Amazon. Cool. They're probably cheaper on Amazon um, if you want them signed. Uh, and I know you're probably saying, "Why would you tell us they're cheaper?" Well, it is what it is. Yeah, Listen, nice. we did all right. Yeah, we sold. Uh, you asked me earlier. Um, as of now, I probably sold between four hundred and thirty-five thousand hard Holy copies shit. of the first book, and probably closer to five hundred thousand with digital. Damn. If you ask my agent. They'll say 500,000. Yeah, of course. But that's yeah. their job. And, but um, it did great. Regardless of being blacklisted by the mainstream media, it did great. That's I awesome. was grateful. I was humbled. And I still am. Um, the second book, Secrets of the Secret Service, same thing. Um, official Gary J. Byrne or um, Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you want them signed, um, um, hang on. I'm going to buy them and then send them to you. Or right. like... Don't. i no. taking care of this. <laughs> Do you want to do it on, on camera? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can I get up? Absolutely, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's a don't. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hard copies. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, this is what they look like. Yeah, man. This is the first one. Wow. I should have given them to before I started yapping. No, dude, this is, oh, this is sick. I'm excited. I love, 
I'm reading Don Mann's right now. His uh his SEAL Team Six. Oh book. yeah, I'm gonna put that on my list. It's good shit. It's crazy. A lot of a lot of black lines through it. <laughs> All the top secret stuff. So. It's kind of crazy. So when I worked. Outside the Oval Office. This picture is, is this is the dining room right behind the Oval Office. That's oh, wow. Bill Clinton. That's the morning Scott O'Grady gets rescued. He got shot down in Bosnia in an F-16. Oh, shit. Bill Clinton just stood there and described me exactly what happened. He was so, this is one of the times where I wish the, the military could have seen this guy. Wow. He was like, that Marine Corps, he, God damn, they're <laughs> charging. They're being shot at. He said, it, and the funny thing was, he actually said, it must have looked like a movie. And then later on, they made part the, of it. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, so. Damn. Um, yeah. Um, he's like, that damn O'Grady. Yeah. <laughs> O'Grady. It was unbelievable. <laughs> you seen. I wish I could have let you read the report. <laughs> but it's classified. Yeah. Yeah. I could have read it. I, yeah. I had to You probably could have. I had no yeah. need. Yeah, yeah. But, I, you know, I, I mean, it, it was already public. But to see his excitement at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It was great. That's awesome. I appreciate you bringing these books, no problem, man. Buddy. That's fucking awesome. Hell yeah. My girlfriend's going to kill me. She's like, you got so many fucking books you never Okay, this doesn't mean I love you. <laughs> you know why that, I just yes. did that, right? Yeah, man. Okay. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for doing that. My pleasure. I so, appreciate it. So uh, if you, if you uh, buy my books and you want them signed, yeah. um, Gary, G-A-R-Y, Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E, um, P.O. Box 119, Morton, uh, M-O-R-T-O-N, Morton, Pennsylvania, 191970. <laughs> Send me all one, of that, and I'll put it in the one description. 19070. Yeah. Yeah, I will. And a link to it. I'll text way. it to you. Yeah, do yeah, that, and yeah. I'll, I'll add all that so, shit. So, um, yeah. And um, actually, if, if, if somebody comes on the, either, either one of my Facebook pages, we, we tell them that right away. Yeah. And all you gotta do is pay for the postage. I, yeah. I don't charge for the signature. Just pay for the postage, and I'll sign it. That's in. cool. Man. If you want something in there special, put a piece of paper in there. Tell me how you want it. All right, cool. You yeah, know. I'll definitely. Yeah. I'll throw all that in there. And I thank you for coming on, man. My I'm pleasure. definitely gonna have you on again later on. I'll come up to. to Pennsylvania or whatever. Well, uh, maybe I'll come down again. It's yeah, not, uh, I, it's not that far. No, it's not. It's not. But and I you appreciate know, I you coming down. 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 My yeah. pleasure. Dude, thank you for the books, man. You're welcome. That was awesome. Reading good health, man. Yeah, dude. That's another episode for the E-Forces podcast. And it's, it's been a real pleasure. See you next time. It's been I'm a real man. pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>